Assalamu alaikum, everyone. We will be getting started shortly, inshallah, in about one to two minutes. Uh, while you're waiting, you can invite your friends to tune in on Celebrate Mercy's YouTube channel. Or you can give them this link that you see on the flyer, celebratemercy.org slash live. We will be getting started in about one minute, inshallah. Please invite your friends and family to tune in as well on YouTube. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah rahman rahim wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Welcome to all of you who are tuning in to our Bethlehem Blessings webinar. My name is Tariq Al Masidi. I am the founding director of Celebrate Mercy that is bringing you today's program, Bethlehem Blessings. And we begin in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. We welcome all of you who are. Uh, from the Muslim community and from our friends of other faiths. Uh, we know that we may have uh, tonight um, people of all faiths joining us. So we welcome all of you on this special uh, program, inshallah, as we uh, commemorate and remember the blessed lives of our mother Mary, or Maryam, peace be upon her, and her son Jesus, peace be upon him. Uh, and this is a really beautiful program that we hope you can also invite your friends and family to join as well. Um, this flyer, this live now flyer has been posted on Celebrate Mercy's social media. You can see it on our Instagram story, on Twitter, on Facebook. So please take a moment. Uh, you know, it, it would be great for you not to be distracted by your phone, but before you put away your phone, you can take a moment and invite your friends and family to tune in by sharing this flyer with them, sharing the link with them. You can tell them to go to Celebrate Mercy's YouTube channel where we are uh, where we are streaming this live, or you can give them this link that you see on the flyer here, celebratemercy.org slash live. 
Uh, for those of you who are not aware of what we do as an organization, we are a nonprofit organization uh, based in the United States that teaches about the Prophet Muhammad's life and character, peace be upon him, through our words and through our actions. And that is to Muslims and friends of other faiths. And we do that through our words and actions, meaning our programs uh, and our campaigns. Um, we try to teach about the Prophet Muhammad's life, peace be upon him, through our webinars, our events, social media trips, publications, and campaigns. And today or tonight is an example of one of those webinars that we do. Um, for the past four years, we have actually hosted an online program, an online webinar every 36 hours uh, over the course of the last four years or almost four years. So since the pandemic, um, we have consistently been bringing you programs like tonight's program every 36 hours, uh, more than an hour a day of programming through this platform. And we have our donors to thank for that, um, who make this, you know, make these programs possible. So thank you to all of you who have been generously supporting this work year after year after year um, to allow us to bring you these programs. And take a moment, we'll ask the audience really quickly to uh, take one minute and let us know which, uh, what, where are you joining us from around the world? Uh, what is your city, state, country? Are you watching this by yourself? Are you watching this with family members, uh, with your parents? Let us know in the chat. We're going to share some of your uh, responses here. We have Sister Rahma with us backstage, and she can share some of the responses that you all are, are giving us uh, about how you heard about today's program. Or actually not how, but where are you joining us from? Let's see. Canada, I see Canada, where else? Let's just quickly show a few. Southern California, Hamtramck, Michigan, okay. Where else? Rockland County, New York, Dallas, New York. Any other countries besides the United States and Canada that might be tuning in as well? Clarksville, Tennessee. We can just show them really quickly back to back here. North Carolina, California, California again, Nashville. So far, it looks like Singapore. Okay, we have someone joining us from Singapore around the world, mashallah. And Dallas, Texas. Okay, the UK. Some I saw someone from Colombia tuning in as well. That's awesome. So we have a, a great audience here. We have over 300 devices connected. I can see right now. Oh, I see someone from Mexico and Malaysia, Mexico and Malaysia tuning in as well. That's awesome. Okay, a lot of responses coming in. So now we have over 300 devices connected. We may get up to 500 devices. And I know some of you are watching us, families, couples, uh, maybe with some friends, groups of friends. So we likely have over 500 individuals tuning in right now, but we have 300 devices connected, which is amazing. Um, um, I am going to also just go ahead. We're going to go ahead and start off with, uh, you know, we, we, we wanted to encourage you all to invite your friends and family. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, whoever guides someone to a good deed or to goodness will have a reward like the one who did it. So simply by inviting your friends to tune in today to this program, you are partaking in a good deed and you will get the blessings and the reward of anyone that you invite to join us so we hope that these numbers can continue to rise as well. What we're going to do is begin um, today's program with a uh, Quranic recitation. Um, and we will be bringing to the stage here Qari Sinan Hafiz, who will be beginning with a recitation from our holy book, the Quran. Uh, and this, and you know, many, many of you may not be aware, but there is an entire chapter of the Quran that is called the chapter of Mary, the chapter of Mary. Uh, and also after the, the family of Imran, um, the family of Mary as well. Uh, that is the family of Imran is, Imran is the, uh, is where our mother Mary comes from that family. Um, and so the prophet 
Jesus, peace be upon him, and his mother Mary are referenced in the Quran. They're, they're mentioned directly uh, or referred to in the Quran more than 300 times. And over the course of this webinar, we are going to see these verses about Isa, and you'll hear the, the word, uh, the name Isa many times. Isa is Jesus in Arabic. Isa is Jesus, peace be upon him. And Maryam is Mary. Uh, so when you hear Maryam or when you hear Isa is referring to Mary and Jesus, peace be upon them. So let me go ahead and introduce Qari Sinan Hafiz. Uh, he was born and raised in the United Arab Emirates. He has loved the Quran since he was four years old. He has a master's in business administration. He enjoys reciting the Quran and spreading the recitation and praying for hearts to soften through the words of Allah, through the words of God. So let me go ahead and bring him to the stage here. Great to have you with us, Sidi. It's always great to be here. Jazakum Allahu khaira. Um, and we want to encourage all of you tuning in to tune in to our dear brother Sinan's YouTube channel. He, once you hear his recitation, if you haven't already heard it, you'll want to hear more. So make sure you're connected with him on social media, especially on YouTube. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the stage to you, Sidi, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair, insha'Allah, we'll start with, with the recitation from the Holy Book of the Qur'an, insha'Allah. A'udhu billahi s-sami'il alim min ash-shaytan r-rajim. Ith qalat imra'atu imran rabbi inni nadhamtu laka ma fi batani muharraran fataqabbal minni fataqabbal minni innaka anta as-sami'ul alim فَلَمَّا وَضَعَتْهَا قَالَتْ رَبِّ إِنِّي وَضَعْتُهَا أُنثَى وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا وَضَعَتْ وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُ كَالْأُنثَى وَإِنِّي سَمَّيْتُهَا مَرْيَمَ وَإِنِّي أُعِيذُهَا بِكَ وَذُرِّيَّتَهَا مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُولٍ حَسَنٍ وَأَنْبَتَهَا نَبَاتًا حَسَنًا وَأَنْبَتَهَا نَبَاتًا حَسَنًا وَكَفَّلَهَا زَكَرِيَّا كُلَّمَا دَخَلَ عَلَيْهَا زَكَرِيَّا الْمِحْرَابَ وَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا رِزْقًا قَالَ يَا مَرْيَمُ أَنَّا لَكِ هَذَا قالت هو من عند الله إن الله يرزق من يشاء بغير حساب وإذ قالت الملائكة يا مريم اصطفاك وطهرك واصطفاك على نساء العالمين يا مريم قلتي لربك واسجدي واركعي مع الراكعين ذلك من Thank 
يدخل مريم وما كنت لديهم إذ يختصمون إذ قالت الملائكة يا مريم إن الله يبشرك إن الله يبشرك بكلمة منه اسمه المسيح عيسى بن مريم وجيها وجيها في الدنيا والآخرة ومن المقربين ويكلم الناس في المهد وكهلا ومن الصالحين قالت أنا يكون لي ولد ولم يمسسني بشر قال كذلك الله يخلق ما يشاء قال كذلك الله يخلق ما يشاء إذا قضى أمرا فإنما فإنما يقول له ويعلمه الكتاب والحكمة والتوراة والإنجيل ورسولا إلى بني إسرائيل أني قد جئتكم بآية أني قد جئتكم بآية من ربكم أن أخلق لكم من الطين كهيئة الطير فأنفخ فيه فيكون فأنفخ فيه فيكون طيرا بإذن الله وأبرئ الأكمه والأبرص وأحيي الموتى بإذن الله وأنبئكم بما تأكلون وما تدخرون في بيوتكم إن في ذلك لآية لكم إن كنتم مؤمنين ومصدقا لما بين يديه من التوراة ولأحل لكم بعض الذي حرم عليكم ولأحل لكم بعض الذي حرم عليكم وجئتكم بآية من ربكم فاتقوا الله وأطيعون إن الله ربي وربكم فاعبدوا هذا صراط مستقيم فلما أحس عيسى منهم الكفر قال من أنصاري إلى الله قال الحواريون نحن أنصار الله آمن ربنا آمنا بما أنزلت واتبعنا الرسول فاكتبنا فاكتبنا مع الشاهدين ومكروا مكرا ومكروا ومكر الله والله خير الماكرين إذ قال الله يا عيسى إني متوفى 
فيك ورافعك إلي ومطهرك ومطهرك من الذين كفروا وجاعل الذين اتبعوك فوق الذين كفروا إلى يوم القيامة ثم إلي مرجعكم فأحكم بينكم فيما كنتم فيه تختلفون فأما الذين كفروا فأعذبهم عذابا شديدا فأعذبهم عذابا شديدا في الدنيا والآخرة وما لهم من ناصرين إن مثل عيسى عند الله كمثل آدم خلقه من تراب ثم قال له كن فيكون الحق من ربك فلا تكن من الممترين إن مثل عيسى عند الله كمثل آدم خلقه من تراب ثم قال له ثم قال له كن فيكون قل آمنا بالله وما أنزل علينا وما أنزل على إبراهيم وما أنزل على إسماعيل وإسحاق ويعقوب والأسباط وما أوتي موسى وعيسى والنبيون من ربهم لا نفرق بين أحد منهم ونحن له مسلمون ومن يبتغي غير الإسلام دينا فلن يقبل منه وهو في الآخرة من الخاسرين آمنت بالله صدق الله العظيم Jazakum Allah khair. Jazakum Allah khair to our dear brother, Qari Sinan Hafiz, for that beautiful recitation. Um, we will be hearing from him throughout the night different excerpts from the Quran uh, as we remember our mother Mary, peace be upon her, and the Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, uh, on this beautiful program tonight, inshallah. Um, we have uh, we want to remind everyone who's tuning in, it looks like the, the numbers have gone up of people who are tuning in. You all have been encouraging friends and family to join us. We have now, we went from 300 devices connected to 450 devices connected. Uh, please continue sharing and inviting friends and family to tune in. And take a moment as you're watching on YouTube uh, and make sure you're subscribed to our channel and you click on that like button. If we get a lot of likes and comments, then YouTube will also automatically start sharing this live stream with people who are just randomly browsing YouTube right now, especially if they're, you know, they, they would like this type of content. So help us get into that, um, that, uh, you know, help the algorithm suggest this video and this live stream to others by liking this video, clicking that like button and commenting as well. Let us know what you thought also of the recitation. We have um, so many great teachers coming up. Uh, our next teacher will be Sheikha Aisha Prime. 
Um, and here is the link you can give to your friends to tune in right now, celebratemercy.org slash live. When you give your friends that link, it will take them straight to this YouTube uh, live stream, or you can just tell them to visit Celebrate Mercy's YouTube channel where we are streaming this live. I see some comments coming in here from our audience, from Mizan saying, Alhamdulillah, the Quran is healing. Jazakum Allah khair for beautifying it. Qari Sinan. Mashallah. And, you know, for some of you who are joining, who maybe, you know, are friends of other faiths, it may have been your first time hearing the Quran recited, but this is the Quran that we recite, our our uh, holy book, the Quran. Uh, we recite this at least five times a day in our prayers. And there are hundreds of thousands of Muslims around the world who have the entire Quran memorized from beginning to end. Um, and it is where Mary and Jesus, peace be upon them, are mentioned in the Quran uh, over 300 times, or at least referred to over 300 times in the Quran. And we'll be hearing those verses throughout the night, uh, inshallah, God willing. So let me go ahead and introduce our next teacher who will tell us a little bit more about the background of Mary, peace be upon her, the family that she came from and her upbringing uh, as well. And I will go ahead and introduce her now. Sheikha Aisha Prime became Muslim more than 20 years ago. She studied at the Fajr Institute in Egypt. She later moved to Yemen and enrolled in an Islamic university for women. She's most passionate about, about combining Islamic studies, cultural art, activism, and service for the purpose of training leaders. She's co-founder and executive director of Baraka Inc., an organization committed to training Muslim women in traditional Islamic sciences. And she's a proud wife and mother of three children. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and bring Sheikh Aisha Prime to the stage. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, uh, you're muted. We can't hear you. There you go. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Great to have you with us. Alhamdulillah. It's great to be here. This is has become, subhanAllah, an annual tradition for which I am grateful to be a part of. I just want to say to everyone, may the peace and blessings of the Almighty be upon you and upon your families. It is always an honor and privilege to be with Celebrate Mercy, but also it's an honor and a privilege specifically to talk about our Mother Mary and just the, the wonderful and miraculous way that not only did she grow up, but in which she lived her life. And it starts out actually, Qari Sinin, may Allah bless and preserve him and continue to raise his rank. He started out right at the exact verse, subhanAllah, which is the beginning of, we can say, of Mary, Maryam's existence, alayha salam, peace be upon her, and where literally her father has passed away and her mother is pregnant with her. And her father was known to, he was, he was the sheikh, he was the leader. He would say he was the, he was the teacher and the lead in what would be considered the tabernacle or the seminary at the time, which now we know today as Masjid al-Aqsa. And so they actually were living not too far it's actually right outside of Masjid al-Aqsa in present day Jerusalem where he had passed away, but his wife was pregnant. And in that moment of her being pregnant, she says this beautiful prayer that she's talking to Allah directly. And she said, I dedicate what is in my womb to nadara, like nadara, which is like to be in your service, right? And at that particular time, you know, what she was saying was like, she was she was pretty much like dedicating her daughter, or she didn't know she was having a daughter at the time. She was dedicating her child to kind of walk in the same path as her husband. And which means that, you know, the child would be in the seminary from a very young age, and then, you know, serve the teachers, serve the clergy, and then, of course, live uh, a religious and a devout life. Um, but at this particular time, you know, when she makes this prayer, when she makes this promise, she has no idea whether or not she's carrying a male or a female child. And that's very significant because the only ones who were allowed inside the seminary at the time, clergy, were men. Right? And so 
you know, those who were young students were all male. Those who were in service to the clergymen were all male. Those who were, I uh, would say the rabbis or the teachers, they were all male. And so this was a, a, a very, you know, a, a serious dedication. What she's saying is like, basically this child will live their life. Like I'm just, I'm dedicating, which was a sacrifice in and of itself because she had already lost her husband. Right, who was someone that was beloved to her, as well as someone who was not just, you know, her beloved husband, but a leader in the community. And so this child would have served as a companion and a closeness to her. But yet when she was pregnant, she wanted someone that would kind of walk in the footsteps of her husband and serve in that way. And so when she gave birth, Right. When she gave birth to a female child, she, you know, she was like, oh, like I've given birth to a female child. And she understood that the implications of that was there were no women that were in the seminary or in position of clergy. So she thought, how am I going to fulfill on my promise? How am I going to fulfill on the prayer that I made to God? And so what Allah answers her back, and I love these beautiful conversations in the Quran where a servant of his is talking to him and Allah is responding and he's and Allah is letting us know this is what I said to her, that Allah is saying that her prayers were not a one way conversation, that this was a two way conversation that she's speaking and Allah is answering. And so she's experiencing a deep level of not just inspiration, but possibly ilham, which is a higher level of inspiration, of revelation that God is speaking to her. And so he says to her, I know very well what you've given birth to. I, I know full well that you've given birth to a female child. And, the you know, and so in saying that, it's like, and, and then he makes a statement, right? Uh, and the male is not like the female, which is so beautiful because Allah is saying, I'm fully aware, right? And you're thinking that there are limitations. And Allah is saying, I know that they're not limitations because there's an emphasis specifically on this particular in the wording in Arabic that Allah is kind of giving, in all honesty, a kind of preference in this case to the female. Like if you had given birth to a male child, you would have given birth to one child who would be a leader. But if you gave birth to a female child, what we understand about that is that the nature of the female is that they will give you increase. So what Allah was saying to her is you thought that you would dedicate one, but I, but as a result, your, your prayers have been accepted in such a way that it's going to actually be a continuous gift that you're giving to me. And so when, and then Allah says that he accepted, right? That he accepted her. Like Allah accepted her. Her Lord accepted her in this beautiful way, right? With a beautiful and gracious and a blessed acceptance. And so from that, she just, you know, continued, right? Meaning she just continued with her promise, feeling that inspiration that she just said, well, even though she's a female child, that's the promise I made and I'm not going to back up on my promise. So then it's just going to be, it's, it's, I'm, I'm going to continue moving in that direction. So from the time that Mary is Maryam, alayhi salam, peace be upon her, she's very young. Her mother actually goes to the gates right, of what we know today, again, as Masjid al-Aqsa, and, you know, kind of hands them over this child. And initially they say to her, you know, out of love and respect, of course, for her husband, but out of her saying, you know, we don't, we don't accept girls, right? You know, we don't accept girls. That's not something that's accepted in the seminary. And we don't accept babies, but not wanting to disrespect her because of the rank and role her father, uh, her husband had, they just, they said, okay, bring her back when she's older, <laughs> right? And so, you know, she said, okay, well, you don't accept baby. So she continuously came, you know, would come back and her mother would just raise her literally in, a, in such a religious and a righteous way that she would be teaching her and molding and shaping Maryam, preparing her for what she said. This is, I, I promise to give you over to God. And again, I'm not turning back on that. So when Maryam gets older, she's aware of kind of more or less the stance that her mother 
mother is taken. And so from a very young age, it said that Maryam actually herself would stand outside the gates of the seminary and kind of, you know, push to demand entrance into the seminary, um, knowing that many times she was rejected because she was a girl. But she would stand outside of the gates of Masjid al-Aqsa, outside of that huge seminary and, and place of worship, and she would give charity to people. As she was standing outside the gate, she was known to be, she became known even as a very young girl, as someone of, of charity, right? And so the poor people would, knew, would know that she was standing outside and they would come and, you know, receive the charity that she was giving out. And then, of course, people started, you know, more and she would draw a crowd. And these people would then also more or less protest on her behalf for why cannot, why can't she enter? And so this created a problem within the clergy, right? Because our the daughter of our great teacher is standing on the outside of the seminary. And, you know, people are paying attention that basically we're not letting her in. And they're, they're you know, and in addition to she's drawing quite a bit of attention because the poor have gathered around and they're kind of also making demands. And so what happens is they have a meeting. And in that meeting, you know, they kind of say, okay, we've got to come up with a plan in order to kind of, you know, for the PR, right? We've got to come up with a plan for how we've got to somehow let her in, but not allow her to necessarily be in a certain position. So there were these internal meetings again amongst the clergymen to kind of decide and said, okay, well, if we let her in, because also wanting to be respectful, she was a girl pretty much entering into a seminary full of men and full of boys. And so there was a, you know, a concern over her protection. And so they said, well, we'll take a vote because somebody's got to be in charge of her, right? Somebody's got to make sure that she's protected, that she's cared for, but that also she does it you know, she, she doesn't venture too far uh, for where girls at this point are not allowed. And so after they have this meeting, there's a decision that's made that, yes, we have to let her in, right? We just, we have to succumb to the pressure. We've got to let her in, but she has to be in a certain area. She won't be able to be in the larger population. And so with that being said, they said, all right, let's take a vote, right? We'll draw lots. And they put their names, uh, some say they put their names on pins and they said, all right, we will draw those pins, right? And whose ever name is chosen will be the one who's going to take care of her. So it just so happened that it's her uncle who's Zachariah, right? And her uncle's name is chosen one time. SubhanAllah, and they said, well, that's her uncle. And he was a bit of an advocate for our mother, Maryam, alayhi hassalam, peace be upon her. And so they felt like, hmm, that's just too much of a coincidence. Uh, in addition to, he was a prophet. And so they said, all right, let's draw lots again. And they drew it again. And Zachariah's name is chosen, alayhi salam, peace be upon him. And so they do this 12 times. And 12 times the name of Prophet Zachariah, alayhi salam, is chosen. And it becomes clear to all of the clergy that this was a decision of Allah, that this was a decision that God had made, that he would be the one who would take care of her. And so they actually build uh, a space for her where she would have her own entrance. And when we're blessed to enter into Jerusalem again, and hopefully we'll get a chance to go and celebrate mercy. There's almost a direct line from where she grew up, from her home, all the way to the door of how she would enter into the seminary, into Masjid al-Aqsa. And so she would go in and then there's some stairs that she would go uh, down. And she was kind of like in her own protected room. But, you know, and in that protected room, she was she was allowed to be in service of the male students. Uh, where, you know, it's, there are narrations that said that she would have to cook and she would have to clean. Um, but for the most part, that she was put in isolation, that she couldn't mix with the male population. But our mother, Maria, was, was a, an, a witty and very intelligent young woman that she would organize her cleaning and her duties during the time of class time so that she would be able to hear the lessons that were being taught while she was cleaning, while she was doing her service. 
And then when they were let out from class, she would go back to her mihrab. And what's known about her is she would sit and she would review her studies. And even Prophet Zachariah would review them with her, right? That he's becoming one of her teachers. So another thing about our mother Maryam is so important is that she was sti still, Allah uh, describes her as amongst those who were a, dev a devote um, servant of Allah. She was a devout and devoted servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So she was known to fast in the daytime and pray in the night. And so one particular time, she, you know, what was known is she'd give out her fruit. Um, her uncle Zachariah would come and bring her meals, but she would give out her food to the poor, right? When she wasn't doing her work. And then she'd return back to her work and to her studies uh, and her prayers at night. And so what happens is that she would fall into fainting spells because she would do this day after day, right? While she's fasting, she's also serving. She's also doing very hard and difficult work and then in addition to that she'd stay up late studying and stay up late praying and so one particular night Allah told the angels like they're gonna send her food right so in order to break her fast Allah would send the angels he would send food to her from the heavens right and he did that because it says she's fasting and she's giving away her food and she's in this you know seclusion and Allah says I will feed you right directly from the heavens Heavens. And so her uncle Zachariah walked into her mihrab, into her prayer niche, and he found the food. And when he saw the food, immediately he knew there's something different about this because he said that it would happen. It began to happen on multiple occasions where she would have fruits, summer fruits during the winter season. Or she'd have winter fruits during the summer season. Allah Azawajal wanted to make it known that this is a miracle, that this is not coming right from this is not the food that he had been providing. And so when he asked her, like, where did this come from? Right? Min anda Rabbi, from my Lord. Right? This is what she says. She said, from my Lord. Right? Like, Allah yurzuku. And yet, man, yasha be guided he said that Allah provides, however, you know, however, he without measure, Allah provides whatever He wants without measure. So, what we begin to see from a very and this is a very, very young age, she's only about 12 or 13 at this time. So, I want us to understand this, this blessed, blessed young woman is you know, fasting praying in the night, you know, studying, working hard to be in service to those who basically to her Lord and Allah is singing miracles on her hand. And what happens is that her uncle Zachariah, Prophet Zachariah uh, had become elderly and that, that he had not had children. And so in this moment where he saw that, you know, that where is the food descending? She's, it's here in this place. This prophet of Allah then stood in that place where she said the food would show up and he prayed in that place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Allah, uh, glory be to him, how transcendent and perfect is Allah, that he prayed in that moment that Allah would send him a righteous child, right? Because he knew this is a righteous child to which miraculous things are happening, miracles are happening on her hand, even at very young. And so he prayed in that place. And Allah says, it's in her prayer niche, in her prayer space, uh, where God would send down miracles, that God also answered the prayers of Prophet Zechariah. So what we know about our mother Maryam is that it literally there was blessing upon her before she was born by her mother's prayers. And that blessing continued uh, throughout her life, right? And her devotion and her service that we know about Lady Maryam throughout the world that becomes famous. This young girl becomes famous for her devout worship. And so, you know, there, there become many, many more blessed miracles uh, that Allah sends to the world through our mother Maryam. Peace and blessings of God forever be upon her.
Thank you so much for joining us tonight and allowing us to be able to speak about such a miraculous, wonderful woman and family. And there's more to continue, inshallah, and looking forward to uh, the next phase, right? What happens next in the life of our beloved mother, Maryam. Jazakum Allah khair. May Allah bless you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah. Thank you, Sheikh Aisha. It's great to have you with us as always. And uh, that was that was so powerful and so beautiful. It was a beautiful way to start off the, the lessons tonight. Thank you so much. Allahumma barak. Thank you. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So that was Sheikh Aisha Prime. And we've been honored to have her on many of these programs in the past with Celebrate Mercy. We've been honored to have her with us on many trips in the past as we went to, as we have taken groups from Mecca to Medina and also taken groups to Jerusalem and Palestine as well. And we, uh, you know, we, we are really honored to have her with us. And we have many more teachers coming. Uh, we even have a surprise speaker who will be joining us a little bit later in the program as well that uh, we are really honored. I, I just, I just, uh, I see her backstage now and I'll tell you a little bit more about her later. Um, but we, uh, we're really honored to have Sheikh Aisha Prime with us. And we now, we now have over 500 devices connected to this program right now. You all have been sharing this. Uh, we have posted this flyer on our social media, Bethlehem Blessings. Please invite your friends to tune in. The, uh, we're still kind of at the beginning of this program. We've only heard from one of our teachers so far um, for, with the first lesson on giving us some background of the, uh, the family of Maryam, peace be upon her, the family of Mary and, uh, and her birth and her upbringing as well. So we are about to go into our next speaker as well. Um, I also wanted to share that this program... Um, okay, so I, I'm showing you this flyer here. This is the link you can give to your family and friends to tune in, but you can also share this on socials. Sheikha Aisha Prime mentioned that the family of Mary, peace be upon her, came from Palestine, came from Jerusalem. And of course, I'm sure you all are aware, uh, there is so much suffering and hardship and a genocide that is going on right now in Palestine. Uh, it's it's not something that we want to ignore. It's not something that we want to overlook tonight. Uh, and we want to keep uh, all of Palestine in our prayers, especially those in Gaza, um, where the numbers are just horrific right now. So as we remember the homeland and the birthplace of Mary, and we remember the homeland and the birthplace of Jesus, peace be upon them. Let us remember that this is a part of the world where there is so much suffering right now and hardship, where children, uh, almost 11,000 children have been killed in 80, in less than 80 days. Uh, so we, we want to keep them in our prayers, uh, especially because this is the part of the world that we are talking about tonight, where all of these blessings came from, where all these blessings, blessings came from, from Jerusalem, from Bethlehem from that part of the world in Palestine. So let us pray for them as well. And we want to also uh we want we also want to make sure that you all know that this this program tonight is part of our Palestine project as well where we are trying to respond to the crisis with information, with knowledge. Uh and many of those who are joining tonight, we know that you are friends of other faiths. There has been definitely a surge in interest in Islam and in the Quran, uh, inspired by the resilience of the Palestinian people. Um, so we want to uh, thank all of you who are tuning in, whether you're Muslim or not. Um, thank you all for, for tuning in tonight. I'm going to go ahead and introduce our next teacher, uh, and that is Sheikha Maryam Amir. Uh, and you can see her name is actually Maryam. So we're talking about, you know, the, our mother Mary, uh, our mother Maryam, and we have this great teacher who is with us, who's been on many of our programs in the past, Sheikha Maryam Amir, and she's going to be talking about our mother Mary and the birth of Jesus, peace be upon him. Let me go ahead and introduce her now, and then we can bring her to the stage. Sheikha Maryam Amir received her master's in education from UCLA. She holds a second bachelor's degree in Islamic studies through Al-Azhar University in Egypt. 
She studied in Egypt. She memorized the entire Quran and has researched a variety of religious sciences ranging from Quranic exegesis, uh, which is tafsir, uh, Islamic jurisprudence, prophetic narrations and commentary, women's rights within Islamic law, and more for the past 15 years. She's been interviewed for her work by major news outlets, including BBC, NPR, and CBS. And she is the creator of an app called Qari'a, which features women Quran reciters uh, on that app. And it's available on Google Play and Apple stores for free, or you can visit Qari'a.app, uh, Q-A-R-I-A-H dot app, uh, dot A-P-P. So we actually... Um, Sheikh Maryam uh, is traveling right now in Mecca and Medina. She's on her uh, pilgrimage right now in Mecca and Medina, but she just sent us a video uh, that we will share with you for tonight's program. So let me pull that up uh, for you all, and we'll go into the next phase of the story of the birth of Sayyiduna Isa, our prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. Let me go ahead and bring that up. There we go. I found it. Hey there, Bethlehem. Blessings with Celebrate Mercy. My name is Miriam. I am named, my namesake is Virgin Mary. I'm very excited to share two parts of her story that mean a lot to me, although all of it does. I mean, when you're named after someone, it kind of is a big deal. I'm not sure how much you know about the Muslim belief of Virgin Mary, but I'm going to share with you a really important part of it, and that is that Virgin Mary obviously had a virgin miraculous conception of baby Jesus. And the way that the Quran describes this experience is that Virgin Mary had had a conversation with her uncle, Prophet Zechariah. And Prophet Zechariah had entered into her special room where she used to worship in a very special place in Jerusalem. And when she would go to this place and he would enter into her room and see that she had this fruit that was out of season, like, you know, today we can go to Whole Foods or Costco or a grocery store and we will see that there are grapes and watermelon and almost any type of fruit at almost any type of, you know, the year, any time of the year. But then obviously they only had what was right available to them. And she would have this fruit that was out of season. And so he would tell her, where did you get this fruit from? And the way that she would respond is by saying, this is from God and God can give anyone whatever he wills. And so that moment, Prophet Zechariah wants to pray for a child. And that's when he prays for John the Baptist. And that was his name given to him after the prayer was answered and the angels came. And after this moment is described in the Quran, then the description of angel Gabriel coming to Virgin Mary is described. Angel Gabriel is suddenly in this room and she enters and sees a man. Now in the Quran, angels sometimes take the form of people. And so she suddenly sees a man and we know from our descriptions of this man that he was a very beautiful looking man. And so she's very shocked to see that there's a man in her room when she is a very pure, pious, righteous person who spends all of her time in worship in a private place in this special mosque of Jerusalem. And so when she sees that he is in her room, she responds. And to me, this is very powerful as a woman, as a woman named Virgin Mary. Well, I'm not named Virgin Mary, but named after Virgin Mary. <laughs> it's very powerful to me because you know, I think if a woman were to find a man in her room that she wasn't expecting, she would understandably and justifiably, you know, be be justified to scream, to yell, to shout, to run out, to grab someone to help her, um, literally anything, attack him. I mean, there could, there could be a million ways that she could have responded. But the way that she responds is that she calls him to remember God. She calls this strange man and she reminds him to be God conscious and she doesn't just say to be conscious of God. She doesn't say be conscious of your creator. She says be conscious of the most merciful. She reminds Angel Gabriel that he should be conscious. He should be aware. He should fear 
the most merciful and not do whatever potential wrong action he's thinking about doing while being surprisingly in her room. To me, this moment is one which calls all of us as believers to follow in her footsteps of worship and action, that you take the moment to call someone back to God before condemning them of whatever they may think. Obviously, when we're talking about today, that's if we're not afraid for our safety. But her reaction was just so pure that her worship and fasting and prayer immediately went to calling him back to God. Our sources say that he then suddenly flipped into the form of an angel because her call was so powerful. And so he flips into an angel and he gives her the glad tidings that she is going to have a baby. Now, her being told that she's going to have a baby is a shock. And in the Quran, she doesn't have a relationship with another man. She isn't um, taken on as someone who needs to be hidden like her in the sense of there's no other, um, there's no quote unquote Joseph um, in this story. We do have a prophet Joseph, but he's a different prophet at a different time period, the son of prophet Jacob. In this story, in the Quran, um, we don't have a description of another man who has to kind of like um, take on her um, reputation. And so when she finds out that she is pregnant, she is just devastated. And this is a very important point for us as well when we're thinking about belief. Because here you have an angel telling her that this is a, a present from God as described by Angel Gabriel in the Quran. And she's not seeing it as a present. She is shocked. She doesn't know how to respond. Um, she is just, I mean, perhaps someone could even say devastated. And of course she accepts God's will. But we don't see her jumping up for joy and saying, I've been chosen, yay, go me. We see a woman who is grappling and trying her best to understand that God's wisdom is beyond her own. And for all of us in following those footsteps, that's a, that's a critical point, especially right now when many of us are seeing devastation, we're seeing um, children being massacred, we are seeing a genocide happening in, in Gaza, and many of us don't understand why. And it doesn't mean that we, we will know, but what we can do is act. What is the action we are going to take? And that is what the Quran focuses on. What is her action? Her action is she carries out this command of God. And so she is breathed in their spirit. Um, Angel Gabriel breathes in um, uh, Jesus. And then we have the next discussion is her going and giving birth. The description of her going to give birth is one that talks about her anguish and her pain, of course physically, but also emotionally. She's a young woman giving birth in the desert all on her own, but then God gives her this comfort and reminds her of his presence, of his being with her by giving her fruit and dates, <laughs> food, which is now known, which is very, now known, which is supposed to be very good for um, birth and tells her that when she is ready to go out to her people. This here again is so important because God is not saying, then give the baby to Angel Gabriel and Angel Gabriel will go out to the people, or Prophet Zechariah and Prophet Zechariah will go out to the people, especially in a society where she was the very first woman to worship in this special um, this special place, Beit al Maqdis, we call it, this holy place of Jerusalem, what we know today as the mosque of Aqsa, Masjid al-Aqsa. Instead, God gave her that responsibility. And so she goes out to the people with her baby and they are accusing her and they are shocked. How could someone so righteous do something like this? And yet she stands firm and the baby is the one, Jesus is the one who speaks from the cradle. He has a miraculous birth with no father. He has a miraculous moment when he speaks from the cradle. And we know that the miracles of Jesus include healing the leper and raising the dead and curing the blind and putting life into clay birds. And we know that all of this was possible from the Quranic statement where Jesus says all of this was from the will of God, that God gave him the power to be able to do these miracles. And in this time where we need miracles to believe, where we feel just this devastation and sometimes this desperation, sometimes we just need that hope, we take from their story to have hope. And we also take from their story that even when people are accusing you, are ready to you know, throw you to the, to the bulls, that instead you call them with good faith, that you be an upright person who has good hope and opinion in other people. We see that in their story that God gave them an opportunity to learn from the words of Jesus. 
God could have simply said that at this point, uh, since nobody believes that Mary is pure and that nobody believes that Jesus is, uh, you know, a prophet of God, that uh, they're not worthy. No, God gave them miracle after miracle after miracle. In getting to know our neighbors, it's important for us to realize that we are not miraculous, but we need to believe in the miracle of joining together in the beauty that comes from that, in the conversation that, and obviously not miracle, miracle, but the, the, the beautiful miracle of life together. When we invest in one another, when we are willing to listen to one another, when we're here to learn from one another, and when we encourage one another, we can build community in the same way that Jesus, that Mary, that Angel Gabriel, the prophet Zechariah, and that our beautiful forefathers and foremothers before, our four people before, built community. All right, alhamdulillah. That was a beautiful video that was sent to us by Sheikha Maryam Amir, who uh, could not join us live because she's currently in Mecca and Medina. I'm not sure which one, Mecca or Medina, on the uh, the Umrah pilgrimage, uh, alhamdulillah. So we're really grateful to her. Uh, always grateful to have her on this program, alhamdulillah, as she discussed the birth of Jesus, peace be upon him, by our Dear Mother Mary, peace be upon her. And uh, we will hear some Quranic verses recited about this. Um, just a reminder, I think we still have, yes, over 500 devices connected. So still, uh, we want to encourage you all to still invite your friends to tune in. We still have many more uh, beautiful lessons coming your way. We also have a surprise speaker who will be joining us that I'm sure many of you know, many of you have heard of, uh, but we will be bringing her a bit later to the uh, onto the program, um, but uh, just invite your friends to tune in at celebratemercy.org/live. If you're watching on YouTube, take a moment to click on the like button and subscribe to our channel as well. Uh, we will be bringing in a moment uh, Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud to the stage, our next teacher, uh, who will be telling us more about our dear Prophet Isa, our dear Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, as well. Um, I mentioned, had mentioned earlier about the Palestine project. Uh, I do want to mention that one more time because this is a project that we began. It launched on Giving Tuesday at the end of November um, as a response to the current crisis in Palestine. And we are hoping, inshallah, that you all will learn more about this project and support this project um, as well. It is, it is our year-end fundraiser as well. But we are hoping to respond to the crisis in Palestine by... Uh, and, and especially the the the, uh, the spike in demand for those uh, among those who are wanting to to read the Quran, people who want copies of the Quran, people who want to learn about Islam. Many people are becoming Muslim, uh, so we're trying to respond to the crisis in multiple ways. But one of which is to serve that demand with welcome packages and books and online programs, like tonight's program, but also an online course for those who are interested in Islam and those who are just become uh, Muslim, inshallah. And we also want to send Muslim leaders to Jerusalem year after year after year to Masjid al-Aqsa, those who have never been before. So this, this project is currently at 50% of the goal, the fundraising goal, and we hope, inshallah, you will consider supporting it, especially uh, before the end of the year, uh, inshallah. Um, I'm going to now bring back to the stage our dear brother, Qari Sinan Hafiz, uh, who will recite the next excerpt from the Quran for our audience, uh, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi s-sami'i l-alim min ash-shaytan r-rajim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واذكر في الكتاب مريم إذ تبذت من أهلها مكانا شرقيا فاتخذت من دونهم حجابا فأرسلنا إليها روحنا فأرسلنا إليها روحنا فتمثل 
فتمثل لها بشرا سويا قالت إني أعوذ بالرحمن منك إن كنت تقيا قال إنما أنا رسول ربك لأهب لك غلاما زكيا قالت أنا يكون لي غلام ولم يمسسني بشر ولم أك بغيا قال كذلك قال ربك هو علي هين قال كذلك قال ربك هو علي هين ولنجعله آية للناس ورحمة ولنجعله آية للناس ورحمة منا وكان أمرا مقضيا فحملته فانتبذت به مكانا قصيا فأجاء أهل المخاض إلى جذع النخلة قالت يا ليتني قالت يا ليتني مت قبل هذا وكنت نسيا منسيا فناداها من تحتها ألا تحزني ألا تحزني قد جعل ربك تحت سريا وهزي إليك بجذع النخلة تساقط عليك رطبا جنيا فكلي واشربي وقري عينا فإما ترين من البشر أحدا فقولي فقولي إني نذرت للرحمن صوما فلن أكلم اليوم إنسيا فأتت به قومها تحمل قالوا يا مريم لقد جئت شيئا فريا يا أخت هارون ما كان أبوك امرا سوء وما كانت أمك بغيا فأشارت إليه قالوا كيف نكلم من كان في المهد صبيا قال إني عبد الله قال إن قال إني عبد الله آتاني الكتاب وجعلني نبيا قال إني عبد الله آتاني الكتاب وجعلني نبيا وجعلني مباركا أينما كنت وأوصاني بالصلاة والزكاة ما دمت حيا وبرا بوالدتي ولم يجعلني جبارا شقيا والسلام علي يوم ولدت ويوم أموت ويوم أبعث حياة
عليا ذلك عيسى بن مريم قول الحق الذي فيه يمترون ما كان لله أن يتخذ من ولد سبحانه إذا قضى أمرا فإنما يقول له كن فإنما يقول له كن فيكون وإن الله ربي وربكم فاعبدوه هذا صراط مستقيم أمنت بالله صدق الله العظيم جزاكم الله خير Thank you to Qari Sinan for that beautiful recitation We we really look forward to hearing more from you tonight, inshallah. Thank you so much. That was amazing. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So we are uh, we are going to go ahead uh, with the program here, and we'd love to hear your comments, especially for those of you who may never have heard the Quran being recited before. Um, please share. Uh, please share your comments in the chat. Uh, as well. And those of you who might be uh, friends of other faiths, if you have questions about uh, any of the uh, the content or any of the any of the talks, any of the lessons today, please be sure to share them in the chat or you can send us an email uh, at celebrate mercy. Uh, and we would love to help you, especially if you would like a copy of the Quran uh, that we can send to you or any other books as well, please uh, send us a message and we will make sure to do that. Uh, to, to help you with uh, learning more, inshallah. Um, we still have about 500 devices connected here, and you can um, invite your friends to tune in on Celebrate Mercy's YouTube channel as well. We mentioned before, uh, you know, that we are uh, also in a, in, a, in a time of mourning um, uh, because of the genocide in Palestine, in the homeland, in the birthplace of Sayyiduna Isa, Jesus, peace be upon him. And I wanted to share with you a two-minute uh, two minute clip from one of the Christian uh, leaders, one of the Christian priests of Bethlehem, uh, where it is believed that Jesus was born, peace be upon him. I want to share a two-minute clip from him discussing how um, they, in their Christmas, in their time of Christmas, uh, in their Christmas time, which is now, um, how they're they're doing it a little bit differently this year in Palestine. And I thought this was a really powerful clip uh, by Reverend Munzer Isaac uh, from Bethlehem. Uh, and at Celebrate Mercy, we take groups almost every year to Jerusalem, uh, as well as to Palestine in general, um, like Bethlehem uh, and Hebron, um, to visit these sacred places. So I'm going to go ahead and play that video for you uh, right now, because I think it is very relevant to, this is a, a reverend from Bethlehem. Uh, I thought this was especially important for this webinar, Bethlehem Blessings. This year, uh, Christmas celebrations are canceled in Bethlehem, and for obvious reasons, uh, it's impossible to celebrate while our people in Gaza are going through a genocide, when children are being uh, massacred in such a brutal manner. Uh, all the heads of churches in Jerusalem uh, decided that Christmas celebrations will be mainly uh, prayers uh, with no uh, festive celebrations. We thought of what is meaning of Christmas for us as Palestinians. 
And what message do we want to send to the world about the meaning of Christmas uh, today? So we came up with this uh, idea of a manger in the midst of a rubble resembling uh, a destroyed house in Gaza and uh, the child Jesus uh, as a child who's under uh, the rubble. Uh, we've seen so many images of children being pulled out of the rubble. And to us, this is a message that uh, Jesus identifies with our suffering. He is in solidarity with those who are oppressed. He's in solidarity uh, with those uh, suffering. So it's a message of comfort and hope to us. While the world is celebrating, our children are under the world rubble. Uh, while the world is celebrating, our families are displaced and their homes are destroyed. So this is Christmas to us uh, in Palestine. I thought that was a really uh, powerful message. And this is a, you know, this is a time of also solidarity with Palestinian Muslims and Palestinian Christians, um, and even uh, you know those who are fair-minded and allies among our Jewish brothers and sisters as well, who are all condemning the current genocide in the Holy Land. Uh, and so we want to um, we want to uh, say that we are in solidarity with all of them uh, tonight as we remember. Mary and Jesus, peace be upon them. But we also remember the Holy Land where they came from, and we pray for peace there. We pray for a lasting peace in the Holy Land uh, and an end to this destruction and genocide and killing and warfare uh, once and for all, inshallah. So let's all say amen to that. Uh, I'll say amen to that, inshallah. So I'm going to now introduce our next teacher, and that is Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud. It's great to see that we still have over 500 devices connected here for this beautiful program. Uh, and I would, I'm would i going to go ahead and introduce Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud from Lanterna, inshallah. Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud has studied theology, hadith, legal theory, jurisprudence, ethics, Quran recitation, and Arabic with scholars in Morocco, Mauritania, and Egypt. He's taught for more than a decade at Yale, Princeton, and Harvard. Then he left academia to institute Lanterna, an educational initiative that intends to establish learning collectives to carry forward the legacies of our greatest luminaries. He continues to read with scholars and students in the United States and abroad. And mashallah, he is really an expert on this topic as we discuss Jesus and Mary. Uh, let's go ahead and bring Sheikh Hisham to the stage. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh, Ustad Tariq and the splendid team of Celebrate Mercy. I also want to thank you, Sheikh Hisham, because this program, you know, uh, began years and years ago, inspired by you, as you, uh, you may remember seven or eight years ago, as the uh, the time of Christmas coincided with uh, the birthday of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, yeah. and you advised us to uh, to host a webinar, um, and you know it really uh, some, it's something a tradition that we kept going kept going at this time of the year. Of course, as Muslims, we don't know when the Prophet Jesus exactly was born. Even among Christians, it's disputed on the exact date, but uh, as we just heard in the Quran. Uh, the day of his birth is a blessed day, as is the the day of the birth of all of the prophets, and um, and uh, we're we're really grateful to you for suggesting this idea many many years ago. Well, not many many years ago; it was like just seven or eight years ago. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, inshallah. Yeah, you mentioned that the uh, the birth date is not really known. It's known that the twenty fifth of December is actually the birth date of Dionysus, um, the son of Zeus. Um, and so that sort of got um, transported over to the birthday of Sayyidina Isa. So regardless, we come together to commemorate him and to venerate and reverence him. Um, and before I get started tonight, I wanted to thank you, Ustad Tariq, for uh, calling to our attention and to our hearts uh, what is actually happening on the other side of the world here. Um, and uh, I would like to begin with a moment of silence uh, and prayer. Uh, for our dear brothers and sisters in uh, Gaza and in the West Bank, inshallah.
Bismillah ve elhamdülillah ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulillahi ve ala men ve ala. Assalamu alaikum ve rahmetullahi ta'ala ve barakatuhu to you all. Uh, if you are not familiar with the Arabic language, uh, I've just cast a spell on all of you. And so, <laughs> uh, no I'm only kidding. I just greeted you uh, in, in the words of peace. The words that Sayyidina Isa, Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, would have greeted his own um, disciples and his own people. Shalom aleichem. Uh, peace be upon you, salam alaikum. And in fact, um, you know, the we've been using the word God throughout the uh, the webinar thus far, but it's important to recognize the word that Jesus himself used to refer to God uh, as a man who spoke the language of Aramaic. And in Aramaic, the word for God is Allah, Allah. Uh, and we know Allah by the name of Allah. So when you hear a Muslim using the term Allah, know that Christian Arabs as well refer to God as Allah, as well as Jewish Arabs um, refer to God as Allah. Jews who live in um, Arabic-speaking countries, that's what I mean by that. And Christians who uh, live in Arabic-speaking countries as well, they refer to uh, God as Allah. Um, and so uh, this is the closest of the languages to Aramaic, and uh, it is what Jesus himself called uh, God by. Um, we have come to the point of the blessed birth of Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him. And I want to begin with a story about the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. When he arrived in Medina, he found the Jews fasting on a day that he wasn't accustomed to. And so he asked them why they were fasting. And said that this is the day that we commemorate their, uh, our exodus at the hands of Moses from the tyranny of Pharaoh. And so he said to them, we are more entitled to Moses than you are. Uh, and so he fasted with them and he, and he added another day of fasting as well to show that we, uh, will, that, that we as Muslims have our stake in uh, the prophecy of Moses and the prophethood of Moses. Um, and so we will celebrate with you, but we will outdo you in your celebration. And so I want to thank Celebrate Mercy here for also keeping this going um, because there are many among our neighbors who are celebrating Santa Claus tonight. Um, and we wish to say to you all, we are more entitled to Jesus than all of you. Um, and we will outdo you in your celebration of Christmas uh, by calling you back to the Christ. Uh, and so this is something that Celebrate Mercy is uh, is uh, doing for the community. Uh, it is a blessed endeavor indeed. And in that spirit, I wish you all a very merry Christmas. Uh, and um, and uh, it's a it's a time of joy. It's a time of veneration. A time of uh, of commemoration of the life and legacy of one of the greatest men to ever walk the, the face of the earth and one of the greatest women to ever walk the face of the earth, uh, Jesus, the son of Mary, um, salam. And so we've come to the point of his birth, uh, salam, upon him be peace. Um, and this is one of the things that the Prophet Muhammad wasallam taught us that you don't even mention the name of Jesus without invoking peace on his name. Um, and, um, and as well as all of the other prophets, uh, just out of etiquette toward them. Um, and I've been asked to speak about the titles of Jesus, um, specifically the Spirit of God and the Word of God. Um, and in that, I would like to just bring up a slide here. Hopefully it'll work. Um, and um, this is a verse in the Qur'an uh, in which uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentions uh, the these two titles of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, uh, the Spirit of God and the Word of God. Um, so here, here we go. Let me try to bring this up here on my side. Okay, is it being shared? I believe it's being shared. Yeah, it's being shared. Bismillah. So in um, whoa, that's not the one. <laughs> There we go. All right. Um, nope, that's not the one either. Okay, there we go. And I'll skip the Arabic just in the interest of time. Um, Nisa, uh, chapter 4, 171. Uh, people of the book, 
overstep not bounds in your religion. And this is addressing the Jews and the Christians. People of the book, overstep not bounds in your religion, and of God speak only truth. The Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, is but an apostle of God, and his word, and his word, which he cast upon Mary, and a spirit from him. Believe, therefore, in God and his apostles, and say not Trinity, which is interesting here because there's not a single verse in all of the Bible, Old Testament and New, Test New Testament combined, uh, wherein the, the word Trinity is actually mentioned. Trinity is nowhere in the, in the Gospels, nowhere in the writings of Paul, uh, nowhere in the Old Testament, obviously. Um, but here we find it in the Quran, in the fourth chapter. And say not Trinity, desist, that is better for you. God is but one God. Far be it from his glory that he should have a son. Unto him belongs whatsoever is in the heavens and whatsoever is in the earth, and God suffices as a guardian. So here in this verse we have two titles of Jesus, one being the Word of God and the other being the Spirit of God. And let me speak about the Spirit first, and then we'll, we'll talk about the Word. The Spirit of God, God said about Adam, uh, peace and blessing be upon him, that um, After I have fashioned him, fashioned Adam, and breathed into him of my Spirit, prostrate yourselves before him. And he's addressing the angels prostrate before Adam, after I have breathed into him of my spirit, right? So Adam had this, um, the, this distinction that the spirit was uh, breathed into him, uh, and it animated him with life. Um, and uh, God had imprinted his names on the spirit of Adam, السلام, and so Adam could become God-like in his attributes. Uh, in the sense that uh, Adam had the uh, capacity for forgiveness and for love and for justice and for wisdom and for knowledge and for hearing and seeing all of these names and attributes of God that are imprinted uh, onto Adam and through Adam uh, onto us. So this is the spirit, right? And in this sense, God, uh, God um, is telling us here in this verse that Jesus is a spirit from him. Uh, and this, this means that, that God owns the spirit of Jesus, that, that it's possessive, right? That, that Jesus is the spirit of God, just like this is the phone of Hisham, right? It, it belongs to me. And in this sense, Jesus belonged to God and to God alone. His attachment was to God and his love was for God. And he was not attached to the world whatsoever. And he was not attached to the worldly either. And so when the in the end of times, one of the reasons why the, he will slay the Antichrist, um, and, and he's called the Antichrist, he's called the Antichrist because he will teach salvation through materialism, salvation through gratification, salvation through the worship of the ego. Right, whereas Jesus taught the exact opposite, and that's why he's called the Antichrist. Jesus taught salvation through utter spirituality, through through doing away with the world and being an ascetic in it, for for having no attachment except to God alone, because he was the spirit of God. Right, he was the spirit of God. His spirit was owned by God alone, and God possessed him. And he lorded him, and he was his creator and his sustainer, right? And so this is what we understand the spirit of God to mean. Not that that Jesus is a manifestation of God. That's not the the uh, claim here. So just like I said, just like we say that this is the phone of Hisham, Jesus is the spirit of God. Um, and so now we look at the the title, the Word of God, which is a fascinating title. Right. So here I'd like to read to you uh, from John 1, 1 through 4. Right. Uh, in the beginning was the word. Well, actually, let's go back. Let's go back here. Um, <clears throat> uh, let me. Uh, 
well, yeah, okay, since I began. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. One of the things about this verse here, or this passage, is every referent back to this Word in English could be it or he, right? It or he. So the, it could be referring back to so it the, 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 this um, this uh, pronoun that's going to come back now could either be uh, for Jesus if Jesus is even mentioned Jesus is not even mentioned here in this verse but it's understood by in Christian theology it's understood that the word is Jesus right the word is Jesus however um, Muslims have always understood this word to be a word just a word right not jesus himself but jesus is called the word of god because his creation is the manifestation of the creative power of the command of god for jesus and everything else to come into existence through a word kun fayakun be and he comes into existence be and it comes to pass, so that when God determines a matter, when God decrees a matter, he but addresses it and says, be, right? Be, and it comes into existence. And in this sense, the existence of Jesus without a father, his birth without a father, is the direct result and manifestation of God's holy command, be. And because of that, he is called the Word of God, right? When you look at Jesus, when you consider Jesus, when you meditate and contemplate about this man, Jesus, who was born without a father, you think, that is the Word of God walking. That is the Word of God teaching. That is the Word of God because his being, his existence is a reminder of God's creative power by just commanding a thing into existence. So when Jesus came into the world without a father, he, you know, he came into the world without a father, just like Eve came into the world without a mother. And so in a sense, Jesus and Eve are siblings, which makes Adam and Mary their parents, <laughs> right? In a sense, right? In a metaphysical sense. That Jesus and Eve are siblings. Jesus came into the world without a father. Eve came into the world without a mother. So they are siblings in that sense. And their parents then are Adam and Mary. Uh, we come back then to this passage. And I'm going to read the whole passage with he, and then I'll, go, I'll read it again with it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And think of the Word as, you know, this command of God to be. Right, but here in the beginning of the was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. If we translate the pronoun as uh, him, then we're thinking about Jesus the whole time, uh, which is what the church really teaches us about this passage. However, if we look now. At, um, at Strong's concordance, right? Strong's concordance of this um, passage, right? Strong's concordance of this passage. And am I sharing? Am I sharing? I don't know if I'm sharing it yet. Nope, not that. Right. So here we have Strong's concordance of this passage. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Um, the same was in the beginning with God, and then all things were made by Him, right? And without Him was not all th anything made was that, that was made. Now, one of the things about this, look at this word Him. We're going to go to Strong's concordance of this and look at G846, because that's where it is in Strong's concordance. So G846... And I, I want to make sure you guys can see this still. Right? Can you guys still see this? Nope, you can't see it anymore. 
So G846, we're going to go down to another. Um, yep, there we go. Okay, G846, you guys can see this now, I'm sure, right? Okay, in G846, you have outline of, uh, of biblical usage. Look at number two, he, she, or it. Those are the possible meanings of the pronoun in Greek, right? He, she, or it. So we go now back. If it means he, she, or it, let us go back now to the translation of this verse um, and see if it lends itself to another meaning, right? Okay, we can all see where we are now. It's not being shared yet. And I'll close with this. Oh, there we are. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now I just want you to think of this Word as a Word, and not as Jesus, okay? Just think of this Word as a Word, right? In the beginning was the Word, right? And as Muslims, we believe this Word to be kun, be, right? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Right? Because his decree is with him. And the word was God, right? Because his decree emanates from him and it's inseparable from him. Right? When God says be, we submit to that decree just as we submit to God. Right? If you submit to God, you submit to his decree. So the word, in a sense, the word, his decree was him. Right? His decree was him. It was in the beginning with God. That word, that decree, it's a word. It's actually, it's an actual word, be. It was in the beginning with God. And why am I saying it? Because that's one of the possible translations of the pronoun in Greek, right? All things were made through it. All things were made through this command, it, right? The word through the command, kun, be, and it comes to be. All things were made with it or through it, through that word. And without it, without that word, was not anything made that was made. So nothing that you see that's created was created without that word. Kun, right? B. In it was life. In the decree of God, in the word kun, in the word B was life. And the life was the light of men, right? And because this, this word, kun, is what animates us. It's what gives us life, right? Um, and so this is... Okay, looks like we may have lost connection with Sheikh Hisham. Um, we'll give him a minute to return, inshallah. He, we know he's uh, overseas. I believe he's broadcasting from Morocco. Hopefully everything is okay, inshallah. Let's see if he comes back in a moment here. But in the meantime, let us know your comments, inshallah. Other, some people are saying, I really wish I could study with Sheikh Hisham. Hisham. By the way, I'm looking at my second screen here. I'm not distracted. Um, uh, let's see here. Others are making dua for Palestine here. We do have a question that I'll I'll ask to Sheikh Hisham here in just a moment. That I, I see some of you have been asking a question. Mashallah, Sheikh Hisham has a lot of uh, a lot of uh, students here who are tuning in. So we'll give it another minute or so to see if we have Sheikh Hisham rejoining us. Inshallah. In the meantime. Uh, those of you watching on YouTube, you may see a, a small button there where you can, because I mentioned the Palestine project earlier, how we are still fundraising for that project. You know, we've only raised about half of the goal uh, so far, but you can also donate directly on YouTube. As you're watching now, there's a, a donate button on the live stream. If you look at the chat and you can donate directly as you're watching the YouTube live stream, inshallah. Um, just wanted to make sure you know that. Let's see. Do we have Sheikh Hisham back? Yes, Sheikh Hisham, you're here. Okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah. We lost you for a second. Sorry about that. I'm very sorry about that. I closed the wrong window. <laughs> okay. No problem. Oops. No. 
Yeah, so I I, I don't know what I, where, where I was when I closed it, but um, in conclusion, Merry Christmas to you and your families. Alhamdulillah. We're, uh, <laughs> uh, that, that, been, said, Sheikh Hisham, that said, we do have a question about Merry Christmas. A lot of people were asking a question when you uh, you uh, you opened a can of, um, I won't say worms, uh, but yeah. uh, uh, yes, uh, a can of olives. Um, so we have a question here. Um, someone is asking here, uh, can we actually wish people Merry Christmas? Uh, you know, as Muslims, is that okay to say the phrase Merry Christmas? I mean, I, there are, we got a lot of these questions. So, um, yeah. uh, and also like, what do we actually know about when he was born? Like as Muslims, do we actually know when he was born? Um, and you know, just more questions about the phrase, cause this comes up a lot on Muslim social media. Can we even say Merry Christmas? What are your thoughts on that? Cause uh where we wanted to just uh you know that that was coming up in the chat well uh no it's haram <laughs> obviously i've said it i said it a couple of times so. <laughs> um, about the birth date of jesus egyptian copts um celebrated on january 7th right and so that's a, a date that's given if you look in the quran there's the verse about um, um, shake toward yourself the trunk of the palm tree it will let fall fresh ripe dates upon thee and it's known that um, the the dates come into harvest around October um, and so uh, it could it, that could be a a an indication that he was born sometime in October, um, December twenty fifth, as I mentioned, Dionysus was, and there's off there, there's another, I forget I forget who he was, but uh, there's another triune godhead in which the sun was born on December twenty eighth as well. I don't know if it was Mithra or Adonis, or I'm not sure which one, but there's two who were born on 20, the twenty fifth of December. Um, about the greeting Merry Christmas, we have to uh, we have to understand <clears throat> that this is the commemoration of the birth of Jesus, and you are wishing someone um, a, a joyful occasion of that commemoration. That's all that you're you're wishing. So there's nothing that's conceded. You're not a, you're you're not endorsing uh, someone else's theology uh, by doing so. You're just wishing a person that uh, that is. That, that shares Jesus in common with you, a Merry Christmas. And um, sometime back, I used to, I changed that to ha Happy Holidays because that's the politically correct uh, way of, you know, because a person may not be celebrating Christmas, so you don't want to, uh, you know, uh, insult him uh, by saying Merry Christmas to someone who doesn't celebrate Christmas. And so you say Happy Holidays instead. But, you know, it, nowadays, nowadays with the assault, on religion, uh, the vociferous assault on religion and and what is religious, um, I I am of the opinion, and this is my own personal opinion. I am of the opinion that we should be doing whatsoever we can to keep these terms alive and moist on the tongues of people, um, because um, so many of our religious vocabulary is is now being deemed politically incorrect, right? And and arcane, right? So you have words like chastity. You never hear that. In, you never hear that, right? You have words like sin. You can't even use the word sin anymore, right? Because like, what are you talking about? Like scarlet letter? I mean, where do you, what era do you belong to, right? So these are all religious terms that are being that they're literally being erased from our from our tongues and from our minds and and if they no longer exist as categories then we no longer render them the right that they have over us so chastity as a conception no longer has a right over us because it's a dead word and the same thing goes for 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 uh, you know so so my own personal um, opinion is that you know, we need to keep these terms alive because Christ is more relevant today than he ever has been. And I want people to be reminded of him. I want people to be joyous on the occasion of his birth. And even, even though we don't believe that he was born on the, on the 25th of December, that's irrelevant. That's when everyone, in, at least in the West, comes around to celebrating him and to remind, remembering him, and 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 so 
uh, we take that occasion, we take that occasion and show people that this is who Jesus is for us. And I can be happy and joyful on the day that commemorates his birth, because when he was born, guidance was born. When he was born, Satan despaired. Lucifer despaired when he was born. And in fact, uh, there's a tradition about him that the day that he was born, um, it was announced to Lucifer that he was born. And he said, never before has there ever been a birth except that I was in its attendance. But this was the first birth that I missed. And that was the birth of Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him. So we, we relish in that. We celebrate it and we celebrate it with joy in our hearts. Um, and, and, uh, and so in that sense, in that sense, we want Christmas to be alive. But we as Muslims, we as Muslims want to bring people to Christ on the day of Christmas and away from Macy's and away from, um, you know, uh, uh, the reindeer and, and Santa Claus and his elves, which have completely replaced uh, Jesus and Mary and Elizabeth and John and Zechariah. And, right, you know, we've completely er erased them with these caricatures and with these, and, and basically with these emblems of corporate uh, dominance and, uh, and interest in the world. But I'm sorry, I've taken up exactly. way too much time this evening. Thank uh, you so much, Jitisha. No, that was beautiful. And, you know, yeah. you know uh, we, we uh, for anyone who is celebrating the birth of Jesus, uh, the Quran celebrates the birth of Jesus, as we see here in this verse. Allah celebrates the birth of Jesus. Uh, God celebrates the birth of Jesus. We don't know exactly when he was born, but if there are people celebrating it now or remembering him now, we hope that they'll that they're happy. Inshallah, it's a it's a joyous time, and uh, of course we have our own beliefs uh, as Muslims. Uh, but that was a really beautiful um, beautiful explanation. Thank you, Sheikh Hisham. We're always yes. honored to have you with us. And Sheikh Hisham was broadcasting from Morocco, I believe, where it's a much, much later in the evening there. So we appreciate him being up late um, on, on his end of the world um, uh, to join us, uh, mashallah. Um, so we are going to go to our next part of the program, which will be a beautiful uh, uh, poem and a song by our dear brother, Zachary Twist. Uh, take a moment and invite your friends to tune in. Uh, at YouTube, uh, at our YouTube channel, Celebrate Mercy's YouTube, but you can also visit celebratemercy.org slash live and take three seconds to click on that like button. This really helps us at Celebrate Mercy when we get people commenting and liking the videos and then uh, YouTube will recommend this video to others and this live stream to others and make sure you're subscribed to our channel. Anyone who wants to support this work uh, to help us continue these programs, these webinars, these courses, these trips, publications, uh, social media posts, please consider donating to help us continue this work, uh, inshallah. So I'm now going to introduce uh, our dear brother, Zachary Twist, who has a song he will be sharing with us, uh, inshallah. Zachary King, not Zachary Twist. I, I know a good brother named Zachary Twist. I always confuse the names. Zachary King, mashallah, is from the Garden States, from New Jersey. He grew up in northern New Jersey. He became Muslim. In 1996, he majored in nutrition at Rutgers. It was greatly influenced by his company in the New Brunswick area during his college years and in the 20s. And since graduation, he's become a teacher. He's gone back for his social work master's degree, currently working in the Newark area school system. Additionally, he's an in-home intensive community counselor for young men. He is wholeheartedly dedicated to urban education and uplift. And he just returned from spending a year in the Gambia as an administrator for the Hurriya Acad Academy, which is an international Islamic school founded by Sheikha Aisha Prime. Mashallah, he is proficient in reciting the Quran and in singing these beautiful poetic words of uh, remembrance of the Prophet Jesus and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and uh, these beautiful lyrics that you'll hear, inshallah. So that said, let me go ahead and bring Zachary King, not Zachary Twist, Zachary King to the stage. Assalamu alaikum, brother. 
Walaikum salam Great to have you with us. And uh, inshallah, I'm going to go ahead and share your first poem on the screen for you. Uh, to, to And if you want to say something about the, the poem, please share as well, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. We just feel very blessed to be here this uh, this evening. And greetings of peace to everyone. Um, I, as was shared, uh, grew up in a, a Christian household, converted in 1996. And in this time, you know, it said, tis the season. And during this season, my house would be filled with Nat King Cole and these uh, songs that would actually commemorate uh, Satan Isa and his birth, alayhi salam, or the birth of Jesus. And uh, there's one that's uh, called uh, Adeste Fideles, right? It's a calling. Oh, come all ye faithful. Um, a song that I heard many times in my house that my father played. And it it brought to me, you know, a calling, uh, a calling that I wanted to share from the Islamic perspective, from, from the perspective that we share uh, during this time. It's a more solemn song, more serious song, but it, it uh, resonates, I hope, uh, with our, our other Christian or monotheistic company, and as well uh, sharing some of the Islamic perspective on our relationship with God and remembering God. It's called Let Us Remember. Oh, come, all ye faithful, humble and submissive. O oh, come ye, O oh, come ye, to worship. Come and make the join the throngs of angels. O oh, come, let us remember. O oh, come, let us remember. Oh, come, let us remember Allah, the one. Oh, come and make thicker of the one and wither. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye, seem to the best Come and restore the covenant primordial. Oh, come, let us remember. Oh, come, let us remember. Oh, come, let us remember. Allah. Oh, come and make thicker, join the throngs of angels who come see, wrapping you and me in wings of mercy. Come to Sakina, light stacks upon light. Oh, come, let us remember. Oh, come, let us remember. Oh, come, let us remember. Allah. Jazakumallah khair, dear brother Zachary King. That was beautiful, mashallah. And we will see you again for another song a little bit later in the program, inshallah. Thank you so much, brother. Alhamdulillah. And we see some comments coming in. Uh, mashallah, people were appreciating that song. Reminding us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. Um, we have another um, another recitation from the Quran before we move on to 
our next teacher, and that is Sheikh Mohammed Adiyinka Mendez, inshallah. Let me go ahead and bring our dear brother, Qari Sinan Hafiz, back to the stage for another recitation from the Quran, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Ith qala allahu ya Isa ibn Maryam Adhkur ni'amati alayka wa ala walidatika Ith ayyattuka biruhi al-qudus Tukallimu al-nasa fi al-mahdi wa kahla وَإِذْ عَلَّمْتُكَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَالتَّوْرَاةَ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ وَإِذْ تَخْلُقُ مِنَ الطِّينِ كَهَيْئَةِ الطَّيْرِ فَتَنْفُخُ فِيهَا وَإِذْ تَخْلُقُ مِنَ الطِّينِ كَهَيْئَةِ الطَّيْرِ بِإِذْنِي فَتَنْفُخُ فِيهَا فَتَكُونُ طَيْرًا بِإِذْنِي وَتُبْرِئُ الْأَكْمَهَ وَالْأَبْرَصَ بِإِذْنِي وَإِذْ تُخْرِجُ الْمَوْتَى بِإِذْنِي وَإِذْ كَفَفْتُ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ عَنْكَ إِذْ جِئْتَهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ فَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْهُمْ إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا سِحْرٌ وَإِذْ أَوْحَيْتُ إِلَى الْحَوَارِيِّينَ أَنْ آمِنُوا بِي وَبِرَسُولِي قَالُوا آمَنَّا قَالُوا آمَنَّا وَاشْهَدْ بِأَنَّنَا مُسْلِمُونَ إِذْ قَالَ الْحَوَارِيُّونَ يَا سبنا مريم هل يستطيع ربك أن ينزل علينا مائدة من السماء قال اتقوا الله إن كنتم مؤمنين قالوا نريد أن نأكل منها وتطمئن قلوبنا ونعلم أن قد صدقتنا ونكون عليها من الشاهدين قال عيسى بن مريم اللهم ربنا أنزل علينا مائدة من السماء تكون تكون لنا عيدا لأولنا وآخرنا وآية منك وارزقنا وارزقنا وأنت خير الرازقين قال الله إني منزلها عليكم فمن يكفر بعد منكم فإن فإني أعذبه عذابا لا أعذبه أحدا من العالمين وإذ قال الله يا عيسى ابن مريم أأنت قلت للناس اتخذوني وأمي إلهين من قال سبحانك ما يكون لي أن أقول ما ليس لي بحق إن كنت قلته فقد علمته تعلم ما في نفسي ولا أعلم ما في نفسك إن إنك أنت علام الغيوب ما 
قلت لهم إلا ما أمرتني به أن اعبدوا الله ربي وربكم وكنت عليهم شهيدا ما دمت فيهم فلما توفيتني كنت أنت الرقيب عليهم وأنت على كل شيء شهيد آمنت بالله صدق الله العظيم الله we're so grateful to have Qari Sinan Hafiz join us uh, for that beautiful recitation again, mashallah. We we are so grateful to him for joining many of our programs, and uh, we wanted to intersperse this program with recitations from the Quran. As I mentioned earlier, Jesus and Mary, peace be upon them, are mentioned in the Quran many, many times, referred to over 300 times, uh, mashallah. So thank you, Qari Sinan, for reminding us of the uh, beautiful passages that some of the passages that that mes- mention them in our uh, in our book uh, in in the holy book of Muslims. Alhamdulillah. Salamu alaikum. Thank you, Thank you dear brother. He was also joining us from uh, halfway around the world right now. Uh, mashallah. So it is morning his time. Uh, so mashallah, we're grateful to him for being up so late. Uh, uh, the next morning and reciting for us alhamdulillah alhamdulillah we are going to bring to the stage our next teacher uh, and that is sheikh muhammad adiyinka mendez uh, mashallah i'm going to introduce him and then he will come to the stage for his lesson as well inshallah sheikh muhammad adiyinka mendez was blessed to embrace islam at the age of eight of 17 after taking a trip to Jerusalem about 30 years ago. He is co-founder of the Bilal Spiritual Center and the African-American Healing, Ancestry, and Development Collective, the Ahad Collective. He has studied Arabic, Islamic sciences, meditation, and peace building with Muslim scholars from around the world. He works as an interpreter of sacred texts, a teacher of Arabic and Islamic sciences, and community imam, as well as a rites of passage leadership consultant who continues to read with scholars and students. And his latest work is called The Spirits of Black Folk Sages Through the Ages, which is a translation of Imam As-Suyuti's renowned text, The Excellence of Black People, Raf Arshatn al-Hubshan. And it was published by Celebrate Mercy in 2021. So alhamdulillah, without any further delay, let's go ahead and bring... Uh, Sheikh Mendez to the stage, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear beloved brother, Tariq, how are you doing? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. I'm doing well. It's great to see you tonight. And I hope yeah. your mother is well and your family yes. as well, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, she's getting better. Please uh, pray for her health. Inshallah. Uh, and uh, for everyone who's watching and everyone who's present for our, our collective well being. Uh, I need to, I've been asked to give a shout out uh, to grandmother Barbara uh, Clark, uh, who is joining us, who's the mother of a friend of mine who became Muslim uh, several years ago. And I heard that she's joining us and it's very special. I've met her. uh, I met her at her son's wedding that I was blessed to officiate. And uh, thank you, uh, Brother Tariq. You know, thank you, Celebrate Mercy staff and and all of the teachers uh, that have spoken, Qari Hafid Sinan, for gracing us and blessing us with your angelic voice. And, and even if you don't understand Arabic, if you, even if you don't understand everything that Qari Sinan is saying, uh, you can feel the, the connection uh, to the realm of spirit. And and this, this is what we are honoring, and this is what we're celebrating uh, when we talk about the great Messiah, the prophet, uh, the word of God, 
uh, a spirit from God, Jesus, the son of Mary, the daughter of Imran, Sayyiduna Nabiuna, Al Masih Isa Ibn Maryam bin Imran, Alayhim Assalatu Wasalam, peace and blessings rest upon all of them. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Allahumma Salli wa Sallim Mubarak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Sadatina Adam wa Nuh wa Ibrahim wa Musa wa Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam wa Nabiyin wa Mursaleen min baynahum salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim ajma'in. What I said means uh, that we begin seeking the help and the blessing of the all-encompassing name of God, the most loving, the eternally merciful. And we praise and we thank God, who is the loving master of all worlds. And we ask that he send blessings, complete blessings and perfect peace upon our leaders, Muhammad and Adam and Noah and Abraham, and Moses, and Jesus, the son of Mary, and all of the prophets and messengers. May God's peace and blessings rest upon them all. Uh, I'm always uh, grateful that Celebrate Mercy uh, uses this season, this season of Christmas, to raise awareness and to enlighten Muslims and our friends and neighbors from other religions and spiritual traditions about the importance of the legacy and the teachings of Prophet Jesus, the son of Mary. His teachings, as my beloved brother, Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud said, are more relevant now than ever when we live in a time of gross materialism and hyper-consumerism where people are uh, defined so many people define themselves by the size of their bank accounts or what they wear or whether they have the latest phone or, or what they drive. The message of Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, like all of the prophets before him and like Prophet Muhammad after him, God bless them all and grant them peace, is that your value and your worth as a human being is not from what is external, what is not on the outside. It's not the trappings of wealth that appear on us. It's nothing that can be possessed in someone's hands, but what makes you special is your spirit and your essential reality as a human being is your spiritual reality. And I grew up uh, celebrating Christmas. You know, I was raised uh, in a Christian family and Christmas, Christmas, like uh, my dear brother, Zachary King, who sang beautifully uh, and kind of repurposed a melody, a uh, song that, that's very familiar to me around this time of year. Uh, Christmas was a very special time. And uh, as when I became Muslim at the age of 17, uh, it was even more special because as a Muslim, I learned more about Jesus Christ. I learned the truth that Jesus Christ taught about himself. And I learned of his place in the Quran and his place in the life of Prophet Muhammad, God bless him and grant him peace, who said, there is no one closer to Jesus than me, than I. That's really significant. And as Muslims, we believe in the virgin birth. You know, we believe that Jesus is going, that he performed miracles, and we believe that he's going to return during the second, during his second coming. And so there's a lot of commonality. And as our dear brother Tariq mentioned at the beginning of this uh, incredible online gathering, uh, it should not be lost on us that the, the pain and the suffering and the horrors and the trials and tribulations that are being experienced by the people of Palestine, may Allah protect them and may God bless them, are happening in a place where Jesus Christ, peace and blessings rest upon him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
used to walk, used to teach, where he used to perform miracles by the permission of God. It should not be lost on us that during his birth, during the birth of Jesus, whatever time of the year it happened, just as innocent children are being slaughtered now in Gaza, during the birth of Jesus, innocent children were being slaughtered in Bethlehem. When the Magi, when the wise men who saw the star that they knew was a sign that the Messiah was born, when they were on their way to look for the Messiah, this is according to biblical historians and what's in the canonical gospels. The king, Herod, who was the pharaoh of his time, Herod stopped them and asked them where they were going. And now they understood why he was interested in where they were going. And, he, and, they, and they told him that a king is born. And he asked, where can I find this king of the Jews? this future king of the Jews that they were going to visit. And they misled him in order to protect the life of Jesus, Ali Salam, according to these narrations. And what he did, once he found out that he had been duped by these magi, these, mag these wise men, he began slaughtering innocent babies. Now, how many babies he slaughtered, historians defer. But the point is, this is a tactic. They, he slaughtered their sons and he allowed their women to live. This is what Pharaoh did. And so now today, when we see the same thing going on in Gaza, where not only the, the boys are being killed, but the boys and the girls and the, the men and the women and the elders and the, the disabled, and there's no one who is, has not been touched by the fire of these bombs. And there's no family that has not lost, no someone who has been lost. And so we should pray for the people of Gaza and pray for those who are oppressed everywhere. And as our Prophet Muhammad so I said, taught us, and this is in line with the theme, this is in line with the theme of, of this gathering tonight, the love. We should not only love ourselves and love our families, but we should love our neighbors as ourselves. And we, on this night, we should be praying as the Prophet Sallallahu taught us, you know, for those who are experiencing tremendous suffering, brothers and sisters, because they are us and we are them. I want to say in conclusion uh, been, that this commandment, love your neighbor as yourself, and according to the Gospels, was the second greatest commandment, according to Jesus, alayhi salam. The first was to love God with your heart, your mind, and your soul. And he even went beyond loving your neighbor to telling people to love your enemies. But how do you love your neighbor? There's so many verses in the Quran, so many ayat in the Quran, and so many sayings of Prophet Muhammad, God bless him and grant him peace, that encourage us to not only love our neighbors, but to love for our brothers and sisters, what we love for ourselves. Everything that you love for yourself, you should love for your neighbor. And he even taught us, Prophet Muhammad did, how to love our enemies by wanting goodness and guidance for all human beings. In conclusion, I, wanted, I was asked to share two prayers, two benedictions that honor Prophet Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him. Every time Muslims hear the name of a prophet, they, a Muslim, will you will usually hear Muslims say, alayhi salam, or sallallahu alayhi wa which means peace be upon him, or may God bless him and grant him peace. 
And so if we could bring up the slides as we conclude, I want you all to join me regardless of what your, where you are, or what your, your, uh, I want you all to join me in reciting the salawat. Can we bring up the slides if they're there? If not, I'll just recite without the slides. Here we go. So this is a blessing. I will say it, but wherever you are, wherever you're watching, I want you to join me. We'll recite this uh, 10 times. Great. We'll recite this 10 times. And I'll read the English first so that we know what we're saying. But we will be reciting it in Arabic. We'll be saying, oh, God, send blessings upon our leader, Jesus, and his mother, the chaste one. Oh, God, send blessings upon our leader, Muhammad, the father of the chaste one, referring to his daughter, Fatima, the radiant, Fatima, the chaste, and upon his family and companions and grant them peace. So, dear brothers and sisters, this is a prayer that uh, is uh, is so beautiful and, and very meaningful and full of tremendous blessings for anyone who wants to be spiritually connected to the Prophet Jesus, to Lady Mary, to Prophet Muhammad, to the Blessed Fatima, and to the family and companions of Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, God bless him and grant him peace. And so we'll say this 10 times, join me. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا عيسى وأمه البطول اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي البطول وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا عيسى وأمه البطول اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي البطول وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا عيسى وأمه البطول اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي البطول وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا عيسى وأمه البطول اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي البطول وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا عيسى وأمه البطول اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي البطول وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا عيسى وأمه البطول اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي البطول وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا عيسى وأمه البطول اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد بن البطول وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا عيسى وأمه البطول اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد بن البطول وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا عيسى وأمه البطول اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد بن البطول وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا عيسى وأمه البطول اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد بن البطول وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم آمين Dear brothers and sisters, do not lose heart. Remember, even if the pharaohs of this world even if the Herods of this, this world try to kill all the boys and all the girls, all the babies, a Moses will always survive. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as salam, Sheikh Mendez. Thank you so much. And uh, I want you to stay with us, inshallah, um, as well. That was such a beautiful, beautiful talk, beautiful reminder, especially of uh, about neighborly kindness and the importance of that uh, in our tradition and the traditions of Jesus, peace be upon him. Uh, I mentioned before that we're also, you know, out of this horrible tragedy that we're seeing in Palestine and, and the killing and the loss of life and the starvation and just so much that's uh, so so much that's so troubling in the Holy Land. Um, you know, sometimes out of the worst of, like you said, you know, a Moses uh, can arise. And what we've seen is that uh, a lot of people are seeing these videos 
uh, of the Palestinians and their resilience yeah. and their strong iman. Their and faith, their faith, yeah. their faith, their faith. Yes, their strong faith and their reliance on God, and uh, and are being inspired to to read the Quran to learn about Islam. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's why we're also, you know, at Celebrate Mercy, we're 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 trying to. Uh, send out as many Qurans as we can and, and books for those who are interested in learning or those who are becoming Muslim these days. Right. You're wonderful. Uh, Amazing. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So we have a special guest with us here uh, that I wanted to, uh, to, 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 to share, a surprise speaker who, who joined us, uh, and that is uh, our dear sister, Megan Rice. Uh, nice. uh, Megan Rice, mashallah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring you to the stage, sister Megan, real quick. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Peace be upon you. <laughs> oh, it's going well. Mashallah, mashallah. Thank welcome. you. Welcome to the community. Uh, welcome to the faith. Oh, alhamdulillah. Thank you very much for having me. Sister Megan, I have to admit, I'm not on TikTok. Uh, maybe I'm too old for TikTok. I don't know. But I know that you have almost a million followers there on, on TikTok. And uh, you're also on other platforms. Um, so I just, you know, I wanted to hear from you as to what inspired you to come to Islam recently. Uh, when did you become Muslim is exactly mm -hmm. what inspired you. Um, it, perhaps, you know, I don't, I don't know if there's a way to tie it to our theme for tonight as we discuss Jesus and Mary. Maybe you can share what you've been learning about them. Did that have anything to do with you becoming Muslim or anything regarding Palestine? Did that have anything to do? I'm very curious because... I've just seen snippets of your videos here and there, but I, I, I'm really honored to meet you tonight. And uh, and I'd love for Sheikh Mendes, if you can stay on for this part, that would be great. Because uh, yeah, I'm going to let you, awesome. Sister Megan, take the stage here and um, enlighten us with your story, inshallah. Oh, subhanAllah. Thank you so much for having me. The, please uh, understand the honor is mine. Um, and, and I would love to tell my story. So... Uh, to give background, because usually what comes with people asking me what my story was, was were you religious or were you Christian before this or were you religion or religious before this? I was not. So um, I was always fascinated with religion and I had religious family members. Um, my father grew up apostolic Christian. My mother grew up Mormon, actually. Um, and to marry my mother, my father converted to to Mormonism. They ended up excommunicating themselves from the Mormon church and decided to raise us um, outside of religion so that we can make the decision ourselves uh, with, with what we learned ourselves throughout our lives. And I cannot be more grateful for that decision that, that, that they made. Um, but my grandparents were, were still very much um, religious. My grandmother and my father's side was still apostolic and my grandparents uh, on my mother's side uh, were still Mormon. And so I, anytime I spent time with them reading scripture and, and things like that was included in that time. Uh, so I did have a fondness for Jesus, peace be upon him. Um, I loved reading the stories. I, I loved watching the movies like Jesus of Nazareth and, and things like that. I, I, uh, I did just have an, ad, an overall admiration, even if I wasn't religious. Um, and so when it came to, uh, religion, I respected it. I studied it because, um, it was intertwined in, in, in humanity and so many of our societies and, um, sometimes, religion was even uh, the motivation for certain laws being made and, and uh, things to that effect. So it also affected my activism as well. And I felt it was important to learn. Now, um, I had not gotten to Islam yet. I had not uh, read the, the Quran yet. Um, when I saw what was happening in Palestine, it, of course, uh, made me stand on alert as an activist and, and uh, made me get to work. But what I was seeing in the horrendous footage that just flabbergasted me, like it, 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 confu it utterly confused me. What I was seeing in the footage was women holding their dead children, men 
digging their hands bloody to pull their children out of the rubble, to pull their family out of the rubble. And regardless of outcome, whether that led to them holding their family members dead or alive or in pieces even, they would still thank God or they would still be calling to God. And I knew my, it, uh, my heart at the time. I knew my heart at the time. And I knew that that would not be the same reaction I would have if I was faced with the same situation. I knew that if I was losing my precious mother, my nieces and nephews, um, I would probably abandon God completely if, if it were me. Um, now, it's important to remember that, or it's important to know that even if I wasn't religious, I still believed in God. So that, that is something I didn't, I didn't, um, adopt any specific religion, but I did believe in one God before this. So, um, seeing them still call to God after losing at quite literally everything, everything, their house, their home, their family, um, their food, their water, everything, uh, I, I just had to know why that was their reaction. And so um, I had made a video on TikTok uh, saying, can we just acknowledge Palestinian faith can, and, and how ironclad it is and how steadfast it is? I've never seen anything like it. Um, and the Muslim community showed up strong <laughs> and said, that's Islam and that, that's the Quran. You should read it. And me, I didn't really think anything of it, but I was like, oh yeah, it's worth a shot. Like I'm, I am curious as to why this is their, their reaction. And so it's also important to, to know that I did not pick up the Quran with the intent of reverting. That was far off of my mind. I, I did not expect that reaction when picking up the Quran. When I started reading, it was just... I had never had that experience with my with any sort of religion where it matched exactly what my core beliefs already were. So it wasn't as though I was reading the Quran and there was some enlightenment that happened that that a lot of people think happened. The enlightenment itself was I'm I'm seeing my heart reflected back at me on the on these pages uh, everything that even the hypothetical things that i was like you know when 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 we die i think it more looks like this or or, or i i the, the god that i believe in is more this way i was seeing that god in the quran um and so it just became effortless after that i i was i have never enjoyed reading a religious text as much as i enjoyed reading the quran I would always, to, to my face would always have two things on it. It would either have a smile on my face when I was reading it or tears streaming down my face. It was, it was one or the other. It, it, um, and so I was incredibly moved and I would, I would be reading the Quran live on, on uh, TikTok as well. And that was also very moving just to see all of the love and warmth that was coming from the Muslim community and just the support. And then it was just uh, an understanding. Oh, this is why they thanked God when they were losing everything. Oh, this is why they still called out to God when they were holding their dead family members. Um, and so upon that understanding, I, it just seemed uh, effortless after that. That's, that's what it truly, that's what it truly was. Um, touching my head to the floor uh, when I prayed was, was not just effortless, but it, it stirred up and just emotion, sorry, Chicago. <laughs> but it stirred up emotion. Uh, that I've felt before when praying, because I because I have prayed to God just throughout major events in my life, major losses in my life. Um, but this emotion was different. It was just a sense. It was a complete sense of submission. 
it was just a complete sense of no longer feeling the burden of my own life. Um, no longer feeling the pressure of having to oh sorry well, alhamdulillah i hope whoever that is 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 safe um but i i no longer felt the pressure to meet any certain expectations uh and i or or when I say that, I didn't feel pressure for my life to go a very specific way and get upset when it, it wasn't. It just all made sense. And the path that I was on, the path that I had been on prior, um, in an interview that I that I just did with a Muslim girl, I, I just pointed out, um, it was never my intention to revert. Of course, alhamdulillah, uh, God had other, Allah had other plans and he is the best planner. And uh, so I reverted on November 10th of the, so I've only been a Muslim for a month. So I'm, I'm, I am still brand new. <laughs> and that's, that's something that people tend to forget, but uh, <laughs> sometimes, um, but it was two weeks after I picked up the Quran that I reverted. Uh, so. Mashallah, that's that's an amazing story. I mean, I wanted to just introduce you to oh, Sheikh. Powerful. Yeah, Sheikh Mendez, do you, do you do you want to maybe like you know um, I don't know if you have any questions for our dear sister Megan or or maybe you you know you're 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 a scholar uh, and a great teacher. So do you want to give her any advice you know before we move to the next segment? I mean, and I want to tell you, sister Megan, as well. Like, even I know you've heard this from so many Muslims, but we're here for you for anything you need. Inshallah, any resources you need. And I hope, inshallah, when you know when the day comes, uh, we'd love to. We 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 take trips to Mecca and Medina and to Jerusalem. We would really love for you to be our guest. You know, whenever we take a group, inshallah, Sheikh Mendez often. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yes. One hundred percent. Yes. Sheikh Mendez, <laughs> and also you. yeah, Sheikh Mendez, and often you know Aisha Prime, who you heard you know earlier in the program, she's often a guest on the a teacher on these trips. We'd love to have you with us, inshallah, as well. But Sheikh Mendez, I'll leave the the stage to you to if you have any advice because you know you, or questions for her. I I, I just want to say uh, how full of joy and and gratitude I am for witnessing uh, the light and the courage and the clarity uh, and the peace that I'm hearing uh, coming uh, through you. And, and much of your story I resonate with, you know, when I embraced Islam 30 plus years ago, uh, it felt, I tell people I didn't convert. It just felt like an, a growth. I was, I just, it was, I was grow. it was a natural growth into something that felt so normal and so much a part of me already. Mm -hmm. And so, May God increase you in strength. May God increase you in faith. And, and what you said about our family, our brothers and sisters in Palestine, in Gaza, uh, there's a word that I think better describes what, what we've been seeing from them. They've been teaching us for the past almost three months now. They've been teaching us how to be Muslim. They've been teaching us how to be a servant of God, right? And, and I think the word is certitude. They have something that's beyond faith. They have spiritual certitude, yaqeen. It's called yaqeen in Arabic. And, and I pray that, that God gives all of us, you, me, and everyone listening and watching that, and uh, I'm at your service. I, I really hope you know. I don't. I don't have any questions. All I. All I. The only. I do have one question. Remember me, and everyone who's praying, and everyone who's watching you, listening to you. Remember us in your prayers. That's 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 it. And uh, I'm at your service. If there's anything I can do for uh, to facilitate your journey, uh, I'm at your service. Right? You have a brother, right here. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. It's the best decision I've made in my life. And I learn something new. And I am not just saying this. I learn something new every day. 
And as long as your heart, and I've been Muslim now, God, thank God, by God's grace, I've been Muslim for over 30 years now. And I learned something new every day. And so thank you. And thank you, Brother Tariq. I have a, I have a, I have a, I have a plan to, ca to catch. Yeah, 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 of course. Hours, but I'm so happy that I didn't send a recording. I'm so happy that I came and was able to share this with you, Sister Megan. So thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. brother. I appreciate you. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Sister Megan. We'll be in touch, inshallah. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. All right, so we can go on with the next part of the program. We have so many comments that were coming in. What a beautiful, beautiful surprise we had, mashallah, uh, with our dear sister, Megan, who just joined us, mashallah. Um, and I'm going to uh, bring, and again, maybe, you know, check her out on all the social media platforms because her videos are really inspirational as she's on this journey of faith and goodness. And subhanAllah, it's just amazing how, um, even though, you know, those who are being killed in Palestine, we don't, we don't say that they're dead, you know, inshallah, they are, uh, alive with their Lord, as we learn about, you know, from those who are martyrs, uh, the prophet Sallallahu said that even those who, uh, you know, when a building collapses on them, they are martyrs as well. So, um, but subhanAllah, out of that pain and difficulty, uh, there is also new life that we see, subhanAllah. We, we are losing, you know, we are losing our brothers and sisters, but we're also gaining a lot of brothers and sisters around the world and people coming back to Islam and people becoming Muslim and Muslims who are coming back to Islam as well, uh, subhanAllah. So I just want to say a thank you to Sister Megan for joining us. It was a beautiful surprise. And um, inshallah, I hope that uh, I do want to encourage all of you to, to try to learn more if you can about our Palestine project as well, because Sister Megan is one example of many who are picking up the Quran now, who, who, are, who are requesting Qurans. And this is one of the ideas we have for the Palestine project is to respond to this demand by sending hundreds and hundreds of copies of the Quran and also welcome packages to new Muslims, inshallah. So we hope that you all consider uh, supporting this initiative uh, of, you know, we want to have thousands and thousands of Megan's inshallah joining our community uh inshallah so i'm going to go ahead and bring our dear brother zachary king to the stage again for another poem and then we will be concluding soon with a final talk by sheikh yasser fahmi inshallah so brother zachary i'm going to go ahead and bring you to the stage inshallah for one more song and maybe you can tell us a little bit about the song inshallah as well i'm not seeing you on camera just yet. There you go. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. So the last song uh, that I was able to sing, um, Alhamdulillah, it was more of a solemn, sincere song. Um, really, I had a lot of, I want to apologize if some of the language was, um, there was a lot of Arabic inside of it. It was really uh, something that related with commemorating the you know, the time and the songs that are about uh, Jesus and sharing the strict monotheism with which Islam sort of relays information. This one's more of a of an upbeat tune that's still connected to uh, a lot of uh, sort of Christmassy songs, but it's also pushed towards knowing more about the Islamic view uh, about Sayyidina Isa or Jesus alayhi salam and his mother uh, Maryam alayhi salam. So it's called Know of Jesus. We wish you to know of Jesus. We wish you to know of Isa. We wish you to know of Jesus and Virgin Mary too. Good tidings we bring about Isa. We sing the story of Jesus and Virgin Mary too. We wish you to know of Jesus whose name is also Isa. We wish you to know of Jesus and Virgin Mary too. Know his way was Islam. Know their way was Islam. Know his way was Islam with the mission so clear. Good tidings we bring the mother of Jesus. We bring, whose name is Virgin Mary or Maryam too. 
So don't go until you know them. So don't go until you know them. So don't go until you know them. As Muslims, we hold dear. We wish you to know of Jesus. We wish you to know of Isa. We wish you to know of Jesus and Virgin Mary too. Good tidings we bring. Of believers we sing. Whose birth was a miracle and spoke in the cradle too. We ask for a prayers upon them. We ask for a prayers upon them. We ask for a prayers upon them as prophets we hold dear. We wish you to know of Jesus. We wish you to know of Isa. We wish you to know of Jesus and his mother Mary too. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much uh, to our dear brother, Zachary King. That was beautiful. It's been great to have you these past couple of years as well on this program. Uh, always enlightening and beautiful. And uh, we wish you the best, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair, brother. Jazakum Take Allah. care. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Assalamu alaikum. alaikum. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah. That was beautiful as always, mashallah. So we are going to go ahead with our next part of the program. We are about to bring to the stage Sheikh Yasser Fahmi, inshallah. I also just wanted to make sure you all know that we had a program uh, on Wednesday night uh, that um, some of you may have joined, but if you didn't, you know, as we as we know, you know, there's a horrible genocide in Palestine and Celebrate Mercy as through the, the Palestine Project, we've been organizing these phone bank trainings to to train Muslims on how to make effective calls to our elected officials, urging them to call for a ceasefire in Gaza. This this Wednesday night program, we had Imam Armo Suleiman and Sami Hamdi join us, also Sister Hena Zubairi. If you missed it, uh, then please check out the recording, inshallah, at celebratemercy.org slash view celebrate mercy.org slash view alhamdulillah there have been there are groups um there are groups around the country in the united states that on whatsapp that have been making thousands of calls every day uh this past week i believe the the groups we've been tracking it on whatsapp the groups made i think around twelve thousand calls almost twelve thousand calls to elected officials pressuring them to call for a ceasefire it should be a no-brainer for our members of Congress to be calling for a ceasefire when almost 11,000 children have been killed in 80 days. But we're going to keep pressuring them, inshallah, until we have an end to the bloodshed in Palestine, inshallah. So please consider watching the recording, inshallah, from Wednesday night's training. There's also this WhatsApp group that you can join, inshallah. And if you go to this link here, on this slide, you can find out where you can join your own state's phone banking group because our goal is to get at least 10,000 calls per day, you know, um, 10,000 calls per day to our elected officials from these Muslim-led WhatsApp groups. Right now, we're at about 2,500 calls a day. We want to have at least 10,000 calls a day, uh, inshallah. And I wanted to play you this one-minute video real quick that we showed on Wednesday night's program to show you that these efforts uh, through the Palestine project of organizing our community and helping empower our community and also the other parts of the, the Palestine project are being appreciated by those on the ground in Gaza right now. Uh, this video was sent to us from Gaza, from a Muslim brother, mashallah, who is there. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick, inshallah. Yes, here it is. Bismillah. Here's the video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. It's Mansoor Shuman live from Gaza. This is to thank Brother Tariq and his colleagues into ensuring that thousands of phone calls will be placed to the U.S. government officials to put an end to the genocide against the civilian population here in Gaza.
from the bottom of my heart and the heart of 2.3 million Palestinians here. We see you. We love you. Don't stop what you're doing, whether it's on social media, boycotting, demonstrating on the ground, donating wisely. We are all in this together. We will free Palestine and the rest of the world. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. SubhanAllah, that is uh, Brother Mansoor Shuman. Uh, mashallah, he's actually a Canadian citizen, but was living in Gaza before the before all of this, you know, genocide began. And his family, him, him and his family were given clearance to exit from Gaza. They could leave Gaza. He sent he sent his family out of Gaza, but he decided to remain behind and document the genocide. And he's spending most of his time helping those who have been displaced from their homes. 1.9 million, about 90% of Gaza is now displaced from their homes. Think about that. 90% of this population of 2.3 million Palestinians is displaced from their homes. Uh, this brother, he chose to stay there. He could have left. He has permission to leave. But he decided to stay behind. And as you can see, his English is very strong. And he's been documenting daily the atrocities there and the stories from Gaza. So please follow him on Instagram. You can see his daily updates there. But we want you to see that, mashallah, uh, in Palestine and in Gaza, they are appreciating the work that we are doing at Celebrate Mercy to help empower the community, to respond to the crisis, to help, uh, inshallah, organize the community so that we can respond to these crises better in the future, inshallah. And uh, again, we want to encourage you all to learn about the Palestine Project and support the Palestine Project. Right now, we are only at 50% of our goal, 50% uh, of our goal for the Palestine Project. So we need more help, inshallah, to try to hit the goal that we have, uh, inshallah. I also want to make sure you all know that we have a program coming to Houston inshallah, in late January. Uh, we have our first ever conference after since the pandemic. So if you're in Texas or near Texas, or even if you're not near Texas, and you can take a flight and join us or drive in, come join us for this beautiful conference uh, taking place at the end of January in Houston called Content of Character. It's a Friday night, Saturday, and half the day on Sunday. It'll be an amazing program with Sheikh Mendez, Sheikh Abedullah Evans, Sheikh Yasser Fahmi, Ustada Hussain Mujaddidi and our dear brother Nadir Khan. Uh, I would highly recommend it. And now you can get the early bird discount if you join, uh, inshallah, for this program. Now I'm going to go ahead and introduce Sheikh Yasser Fahmi, who will be our final teacher for the night, inshallah. Uh, and we will hear from him on this topic of uh, Bethlehem blessings, inshallah. Sheikh Yasser Fahmi graduated from Rutgers Business School, and after working for a number of years in finance, he then moved to Egypt, where he studied for eight years at Al-Azhar University. In his time at Al-Azhar, Sheikh Yasser attained numerous ijazas, and he studied under many notable teachers, including Sheikh Ahmed Taha Rayyan. May Allah have mercy on him. In 2013, Sheikh Yasser Fahmi became the first American Azhari or graduate from Al-Azhar to teach in the renowned Al-Azhar Mosque in Cairo. Currently, Sheikh Yasser is the main teacher and he's also founder of Prophetic Living. Alhamdulillah. So Sheikh Yasser, by the way, is in Medina right now. He's in Medina leading a group for Umrah. And he was able just a few hours ago to record a video. In this video, you will see uh, the, the the mosque of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu behind him. You'll see the, the 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 iconic green dome, and that is under uh, you know under under that green dome is the resting place of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his closest companions. Uh, so we're really blessed to have this video from Sheikh Yasser Fahmi recorded just today from the beloved city of light of Medina, uh, the uh, of the uh, beloved city of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, what a blessing that is, Alhamdulillah. Let me go ahead and bring that video here to the stage. 
And right after that video, we'll just end with a couple of closing announcements, inshallah. Let's go ahead and show it now. Sheikh Yasser Fahmi. Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa la wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina wa maulana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fil awaleen wa fil akhireen wa fil malai al-a'la ila yawm al-deen Alhamdulillah thumma alhamdulillah gives me great pleasure to join you on this blessed webinar from the city of al-habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the city of lights and um, subhanAllah, although there's some challenges to get this going, but I really felt that I wanted to contribute. And subhanAllah, the theme of loving thy neighbor, I think is pretty poignant given the circumstances of what's transpiring in the blessed lands of Al-Aqsa. And behind me, we have the dome of the Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam, the green dome that is internationally known. And beneath it lies the blessed body of Al-Habib SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam and his neighbor is Sayyiduna Abu Bakr and the neighbor of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr is Sayyiduna Umar and so Sayyiduna Umar he awaits a neighbor and that neighbor is Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam and so it is a very neighborly beautiful community of believers and lovers who are together in these lands but Sayyiduna, subhanAllah Sayyiduna Umar and Sayyiduna Isa their neighborliness makes me think about Sayyiduna Umar's conquest when he entered into the lands of Jerusalem. And we know that beautiful story of how Sayyiduna Umar, when Sophronius, the Byzantine ruler, sent a letter for Sayyiduna Umar to come to officially accept the keys to the city. This, this was a reality. Sayyiduna Umar was here in Medina. And this was not a reality that necessarily the Muslims wanted to accept. And the reason being was Sayyiduna Umar was coming from a position of power. And to humble himself by going to accept the keys as a request was not necessarily one that he had to oblige. But he actually consulted with Sayyiduna Ali here, here in Medina. Sayyiduna Umar and Sayyiduna Ali consulted one another on this topic. And Sayyiduna Ali actually advised him, he said, that is a sacred land, the lands of, you know, that is an extension of uh, Baytul al kaaba the Baytul Haram, Al Masjid al Nabawi, Al Masjid al Aqsa. These are, this is a sacred union. And so you should go. And so Sayyidina Umar actually went. And he went, as we know in the famous narrations, very humbly. He went with simple garments, with one helper. And that indicates the type of ruler, an individual he was, the type of man, the type of lover of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He went with humility. And when he entered, and when he uh, neared the gates, a companion who was, who was there told him, Ya Umar, please, you know, come up on the, uh, at least ride the, 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 the horse, at the very least. And he said, Laytaha, uh, qal, Laytaha I wish someone other than you would have said this. We are a people, and I want you to pay attention closely, brothers and sisters. We are a people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought us dignity through Islam. Our dignity and our honor comes through Al-Islam. And if we seek our dignity, our, our honor in other than Islam, then surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will abase us. And so subhanAllah Sayyidina Umar, he accepts the keys to the city of Jerusalem in this spirit, in this humble spirit. And the people were truly in awe of him. How could this be, you know, a ruler of a people? So simple, so humble. When the time of Salatul Asr came, the Archbishop, and by the way Sayyidina Umar, he visited both the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and the Church of the Nativity, both where it is said that Jesus was born by the Nativity, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which is right in Al-Aqsa. So when it was Salatul Asr, the Archbishop offered him, he said, why don't you pray in the, in the cathedral? And Sayyidina Umar said, no. He said, this is a church that we must preserve for you. This is sacred to you. I fear that if I were to pray here, people coming after would say that we have rights to these lands, subhanAllah. See the humility, the beauty, the mercy, the fraternity, the companionship of prophecy. Because Sayyiduna Isa is a brother in prophecy to Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And so there is a brotherliness there that was inherent. And so to protect the sanctity and the integrity 
of that brotherhood, that neighborliness, that prophetic neighborliness, if you will. He said, no, this is for you. And subhanAllah, outside, he prayed. And until today, as a testament to the mercy, the compassion, the beauty of Sayyiduna Umar, who comes from the lineage of Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, who's the extension of that lineage of prophecy from Sayyiduna Ibrahim, Abraham, to Moses, to Jesus, to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the Masjid of Umar exists until today. And subhanAllah, when he went to where the Mi'raj happened, to where, where, the, where the Sakhra is, where the stone is, he went there, and it was, it was completely in ruins. And Sayyiduna Umar began to clean it, subhanAllah, as he started to establish the foundations to rebuild. One of the things that Sayyiduna Umar did, and subhanAllah, this is something so critical to note with the reality that we're seeing today, in the lands of Palestine, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless, honor, and protect our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Sayyiduna Umar did something that was truly unthinkable for the, for, the, for the Byzantine rulers, which was that he invited 80 Jewish families to come and settle in Jerusalem, subhanAllah, to come and live in Jerusalem. And they had been exiled for 500 years from those lands by the Byzantine rulers. Sayyidina Umar reintroduced to the lands uh, our Jewish brothers and sisters. And when they saw Sayyidina Umar cleaning where the Mi'raj happened, where Quba al Sakhra is, they were touched and they began to help him. And subhanAllah, Muslims, Christians, and Jews lived in beautiful harmony for centuries on end by the spirit, by the prophetic spirit that Sayyiduna Umar established. Because Sayyiduna Umar understood the beautiful bond that exists between these faith traditions that span centuries. Sayyiduna Umar is a man who comes from the lineage of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who his Prophet taught him to honor the people of Moses, the people of Jesus, the people of David, the people of Solomon. We, our tradition teaches inherently to honor one another in this way. And that spirit, that prophetic spirit that animated those lands for centuries on end is unfortunately what we see lost in our lands today. In those sacred lands, you see, subhanAllah, you see a type of supremacist discourse that subjugates Muslims, Christians, as well as Jews. That in the lands of Jerusalem today, the lands of Bethlehem, these sacred lands, you see narratives and ideologies and, and, and discourses that subjugate and belittle Muslims, Christians, and Jews. And so I think as people in the modern world, as people who are trying to live as an extension of these sacred traditions, we have to think about how, what is the true spirit that must exude to bring back a genuine harmony between the human condition, between these faith traditions. Because that land tasted it and knew it for centuries. Today, what we're seeing today is an aberration. It's an aberration to that truth, to that prophetic truth. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspires all of us, Muslims, Christians, and Jews, to go back to our sacred traditions, to understand what would be truly pleasing to our prophets. What would be pleasing to Moses? What would be pleasing to David, to Solomon, to Sayyiduna Isa, Jesus? And what would be pleasing to Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam? That's the question. I pray that in these days and these nights, as we're here in the sacred land of Medina, in the, light, in the city of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, where eventually they await the coming of Jesus to be buried here, next to Sayyiduna Muhammad, Sayyiduna Abu Bakr, Sayyiduna Umar, I pray that our spirits, our hearts, and our minds become illuminated beautifully by this sacred tradition. Barakallahu feekum wa jazakumullah khair wa sallillahumma wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Thank you to Sheikh Yasser Fahmi for that beautiful, beautiful talk. What a beautiful concluding talk. And I want to invite all of you who are watching, especially those of you who have 
family members who may not be Muslim, or those of you joining, you know, who are not Muslim, or friends of other faiths, if you would like a copy of the Quran, uh, a welcome package, perhaps you are a new Muslim, you've recently become Muslim, you'd like a welcome package of some books, uh, or we actually are going to be beginning in January an online weekly class uh, for new Muslims, or those who are uh, considering becoming a Muslim, uh, send us an email, inshallah, we would like to help you uh, get access to those resources. This is one of the objectives of the Palestine Project. With all of this increase, uh, increased interest and demand in learning about Islam, we want to be able to help with that, inshallah. Um, uh, so please send us an email if you are interested. And as you're watching on YouTube, uh, please consider subscribing, liking the video, commenting, uh, donating. You can donate directly on YouTube now as you're watching, inshallah. Please consider that. Um, I see so many beautiful messages that are coming in. Um, I see here Brother Malik who said, when I see people like Megan come to Islam and I listen to Surah Al-Nasr, I always cry every time. Mashallah. And someone else said, I loved hearing from Sister Megan. So inspiring to born Muslims and convert Muslims alike. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Um, I mentioned before, just in closing about the Palestine project, how you can support it. Uh, we are only about halfway to our goal, but uh, I wanted to show you a couple of pictures. These are pictures from, uh, I think we have Brother Herbert watching. Brother Herbert is there on the left uh, in this picture wearing the black sweatshirt there, black sweatpants, I believe. Uh, this is a picture from when we recently, uh, just uh, almost a year ago, we took a group to Palestine. We took a group to Jerusalem. Uh, and inshallah, through the Palestine Project, we are hoping, inshallah, to take every single year, we want to take Muslim leaders, Muslim leaders who have never been to Masjid al-Aqsa, we want to take them to Jerusalem and to the West Bank, inshallah. This will almost be like our version of the birthright trip. We want Muslims to be visiting Masjid al-Aqsa to support the local Palestinian community there. When we take Muslim groups there, we only stay in Palestinian hotels. We eat at Palestinian-owned restaurants. We uh, go to Palestinian-owned shops. Uh, we're obviously spending a lot of time in Masjid al-Aqsa, but we visit Bethlehem, we visit Jerusalem, we visit Hebron. Uh, you know, so it is a very beautiful journey. So inshallah, we want to take thousands and thousands of Muslims there in the future, inshallah. And I didn't mention before, Sheikh Mendez reminded me that when we're talking about Bethlehem, when we're talking about the sacred town of Bethlehem, Bethlehem, by the way, we're talking about blessings, the blessings of Bethlehem. Bethlehem was visited by our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Not only did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi visit Jerusalem on the night of the Isra and Mi'raj, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi visited Bethlehem and he prayed there. When he was on the journey on the Isra and Mi'raj, he made stops. He made stops along the way, on the way to Jerusalem. And one of those stops was in Bethlehem. And the Prophet ﷺ prayed there. He, he prayed where Jesus, peace be upon him, was born. Think about that. That is why it is such a blessed place. That is why we're calling it Bethlehem Blessings. It is blessed in so many ways, but also blessed by the visit of our Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. So, Visiting Palestine is something that our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam did, and we want to take more Muslims to visit, inshallah. So please consider supporting this project, learning more, uh, and you can do so here. And by the way, when you give, and this is a great way, you know, just just keep in mind if you're in the United States, a donation is tax deductible as well. So, uh, and. God only knows, like if we could, if we could have to, if we could, if there was some way we could pay less taxes, especially when our tax dollars are being used to kill children, uh, giving charity in the United States to a 501c3 organization is a way to reduce how much taxes you have to pay because uh, your taxable income is less when you give charity. So consider doing that, inshallah. And by the way, this year-end fundraiser that began on Giving Tuesday, we have gifts that we're also giving 
to those who are making donations as well, including the Palestinian kafia, uh, uh, you know, this black and white, you know, cloth here that you've seen so many times now uh, in these videos and, and Muslims are wearing it in solidarity. This gift is for a $300 donation, but we even have olive oil from Masjid al-Aqsa, from the sacred precinct of the Haram in Jerusalem. We have olive oil that is pressed from the olive trees of Masjid al-Aqsa, uh, and that is blessed land. Even in the Quran, it talks about the surroundings of Masjid al-Aqsa being blessed. And there's also a beautiful book about Mary and Jesus, peace be upon them, for children. So when you support the Palestine Project, you get some really beautiful gifts in the mail as well, inshallah. Again, how do you support it? You can donate directly on YouTube right, as you're watching the recording or watching the live stream, but you can go to launchgood.com slash CM. So thank you to all of you who joined us, inshallah. We pray that you have a blessed evening, a blessed time uh, with your families. For those of you who are with your family over this winter break, inshallah. And if you missed any part of this program, you can go back and watch it on YouTube uh, or invite others to watch it on our YouTube channel as well. Thank you to all of you. May Allah bless you. May Allah uh, bless us by through the remembrance of our prophets, uh, the prophets like Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Isaac, Jacob, Job, uh, all of these prophets and our prophet Muhammad, Peace be upon him. Take care, everyone. Peace be with you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.